everyone, how's it going? Where's my... Ah. Uh, that's where it is. Uh, welcome everyone to the live stream. Uh, today we're going to be joined by Darren from PWS, which is very exciting. I've just got to get a few things sorted before we get going. So if you just bear with me for two minutes, that'd be great. Thanks. Do, 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 do. If anyone's got any, um, if anyone's got any questions, technical questions regarding pressure washing from Darren, um, he'll be able to see the, the live chat as well. So you can, uh, ask all your questions in there. I'm sure he'll be able to answer every single one of them. He's, uh, the man in the know. Uh, Luke, welcome. Trackers, welcome. Reese, John, Washfix, how's it going? Love the new van, thanks. I've had some really nice feedback on the new video. Um, everyone's saying like, there's a couple of people that have messaged me saying, um, this is your, your best video yet. I don't know why, I don't know what I've done differently this time, but I'm very grateful. Um, Green Army, um, that, and then we want green. Done. Oh no, that's not green, is it? We want the background to be black. Now we want the writing to be black. And then we want that to be green. Yeah, that's better. Just getting Darren's website up in the bottom corner there so you guys can see it. Do, do, do. God, there's so many of you. Jeez, welcome, Lindsay, Matt, Urban Detail, uh, Marius, Shay. That looks really good. Thank you, Chris. Al Milhouse, I'm sorry about your back, mate. I've just read your comment. Um, you always put some lovely comments on my videos, so thank you. I hope you're feeling good. I hate your new van, mate. It's bigger than mine. <laughs> Russ, welcome. Um... Hooper, Corian, Chelt, oi oi. Has anyone got any questions loaded up? Get your questions loaded. Uh, because Darren is presumably going to be here. In a, I haven't even spoken to him today, actually. Um, so hopefully he's here. The new van's amazing, but the ladder level, I know. Oh, no. The level of the, the, level of the ladder, man, I'm just like... I'm wondering if there's a bit of adjustment, if I can loosen off all the nuts and then just give it a shimmy and tighten everything back up. I don't know. Sam, welcome. Do you mind me asking how much the mileage is? The The van was seven and a half grand, uh, but it's got 230,000 miles on it. I bought it from a family friend. Um, I know the risk that I'm taking by getting such a high mileage van, but it, it is a sprinter and they do go for a while as long as they're well serviced and well maintained, which... You know, it seems to have been well looked after. Um, I understand the risk. Uh, but it was the only one that was that big that was in my price range. So, you know, sometimes you've got to take a risk. You know what I'm saying? He's come in. I spoke to him nice. Uh, haven't seen today's video. Barkley, welcome. Um, can you have a look on Jetmax data packs? Not right now, just because we've got a different supplier in today. Um... We're going to be talking about PWS probably a bit more than, uh, you know what I'm saying. Uh, JP, welcome. New Watcher, welcome. Awesome. Hi, my Jake. <laughs> um, need to sell both my cars first. That's when you know you're deeply invested, is when you sell your car in order to buy a van. I sold my classic car, my, my um, not a Rickman Ranger, that was my other one. I sold my Reliance Scimitar to buy and make space for my uh, my van. I used to drive interesting cars. I used to drive fast cars. And now I drive big vans. How life changes. Um, should we get him in? Where is he? Discord. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. This is my weekend, if you'll remember. So I'm having a beer. Got the whiskey down there as well.
I've just spent two days on a roof. Finished it today, which was awesome. Um, <clears throat> right, uh, Darren, I'm in the uh, I'm in the voice chat channel, so hopefully you can join when you're ready. Engine management light does that ban use AdBlue? Uh, it does. It's had all the AdBlue system replaced apparently because it's quite a common fault where it starts like a countdown timer and then you find that one day you just can't start the vehicle because the countdown time has run out but um that's all been that's all been taken care of apparently uh, also i've got no service history with it so i don't know when the timing chain's been done i don't i don't know whether it's a is it a belt or a chain i don't know gearbox feels a bit stiff i'm hoping that's just some grease that i can put underneath the uh in the linkage if not, I'll be changing the gearbox oil, hoping that sorts it. I don't know. <clears throat> there is so many of you, and you're all commenting and chatting and stuff, and this is going to be very difficult to keep up with tonight, so I'm sorry in advance if anyone gets missed. Uh, there's nothing like driving a big van. I've curbed the back wheels three times on, uh, on a roundabouts already. I'm very worried about like parked cars. I'm constantly checking my mirrors to see if I'm giving myself enough room. Like, I, I feel like I am giving myself loads of room. And then I feel, whoop, that was a curb. And, uh, yeah, driving a big van is different. And I don't know what, Ad, I don't even know what AdBlue is. So, I guess I'll, I'm presumably it'll tell me on the dashboard that the AdBlue needs topping up. I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it, I suppose. Good news, I had the AdBlue removed just after I bought the van. Did it get, like, bypassed or something? Um, and is that legal? Because it, isn't it something to do with the emissions? I don't know. Bartos, welcome. Darren, welcome. Uh, Tom Hood, yeah, good news. Had the, oh, I just read that, sorry. John Summers, why are you scraping now, not pressure washing? Is this because of the issue you had when the water went in the loft? Um, so the most recent roof scrape that I did which is on Facebook at the moment. Um, the reason I scraped this one is because this was on a... Uh, the reason I scraped this one... Oh, my God. I can hear myself. Yeah. Hello, Darren. On a... Hello. You're right. Hold on. That's better. Um... Should we do a little, should we see if we can do a video chat? Yeah, have I not, have I, have I not turned video on? You might have, but I can't see you because I'm, I'm not I'm not in it. Oh. you got to be in it to win it. You have. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Integrated camera, turn on. Can you see me? I'll tell you in a second. I'm just checking I'm using the right ones. Voice and video, video settings. Can you hear me nice and clear? I can hear you. That's very cool. You've got the, uh, you've shaved. He shaved all his Where? hair off. Jokes, just the, uh, just the top bit, not the beard. I, uh, in all honesty, I got absolutely fed up of looking like Marv out of Home Alone. So it had to go. I, did, I, I thought you looked fantastic. I always think you look fantastic. How are you doing, my Jake? I'm good, mate. What does that say? I love Weymouth. <laughs> my Jake. If for anyone that doesn't know, that's a reference from uh, Avatar. We've not got a weird, like, <laughs> relationship going on behind the scenes. I'm not the one going bright red when you're trying to explain it away, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a good day? No. Oh. It's no. Mon Monday. And Monday's ever, ever good. Manic Monday. Yeah. In fact, we started walking around singing, just another Manic Monday. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Um, for anybody who's been in today will know, I booked one job in because we're busy. Um, and I booked one appointment with one person. 
and anybody that came in today will have seen the 10 vans parked outside our place um and loads and loads and loads of people turn up today and darren trackers darren can't help himself people just walk in all day and um they get your undivided attention regardless of whatever you're doing it'll just disappear with someone for like an hour it's like oh someone else has come in someone else has come in you just you can't anyone you're there jake we just leave you alone uh it's just um, the customer service is very impressive everyone gets your full attention when you arrive which is really cool we do try it's getting i I am gonna say it is getting harder um i did some 90 hours last week and it's just it's not sustainable you know um but i'm gonna keep doing it while i can We, we if it continues to stay like this and not be a fad or a peak or a spike, then we'll just staff and change and grow with it. Do you um do you find people want you because of like the the stuff on social media and stuff, and you you do the live streams and you're clearly very knowledgeable. Do you find people come in just to speak to you, or are they happy speaking to the other guys? A little bit, you see. The, we, I've got some customers that come into our place that will only speak to John. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're John's customers. Or will only speak to Sonia or Chris or Ron or any of the others. Um, there is a bunch of people um, out of this that ring up and speak to me, but when they realise that... But Sonia's the worst one. Sonia, she feels the worst and she feels the most beat up. Because people go, oh, it's a girl. Oh, I was just about to say, I had the pleasure of spending the whole day with Chris and Sonia um, on Friday. And her knowledge just blew my mind. Just little things. She said, um, she looked at my pressure washer and said the, uh, I think she looked at the oil in in the pump or the gearbox. And she went, has this been started recently? I said, yeah, how'd you know that? And she went, oh, I thought there was, um, there was like bubbles in the um, in the oil. She said, I thought the oil was cloudy, but it's not. It's just because it's just been started. I was like, how, how the hell do you, do you know what I mean? The, the loads of little things she said throughout the day. And I was like, bloody hell, she knows her stuff. Well, we've had a new girl start. Um, she started last Wednesday and she started this week. Um, she's been in again today, Helen, and she's only coming as an admin assistant. So we're talking telephones, accounts, you know that kind of stuff. Um, there we go. BM Gordon says so she probably spoke to Helen. Um, and what we're doing with Helen is Helen spending her first couple of weeks in the workshop with all of us, learning about the machines and the fittings and the couplings. And she's never going to fix one, but she needs to be able to understand when somebody rings and goes. I've got a petrol machine or I've got a hot machine. I've got a boiler. She can at least get the right person. So, so in our place, you can go and fetch the right person to get the right advice. Mm -hmm. We're not expecting her to know all of the answers and we're not expecting her to do the sales, but um, we're trying to get her to a point where she can go and find the right people to um, help them or support them or do what they need to do. Are you going to get her on the tools and stuff just to get her a bit of experience, understanding what it is? Wednesday, she's building. Oh, nice. Awesome. Um, Because this week there's something like, and the frames have arrived. What's something like 30 machines to build this week and one compact um, because all the frames have just arrived in um, and the extra engines are arriving tomorrow and the extra pumps are arriving. Um, Pretty mental, to be honest. By the way, I appreciate you doing this because you were were burnt out on Friday night. And... uh... I'm guessing and you should have seen, you thought it was bad Friday. You should have seen me Saturday. <laughs> you work so back. you work Saturday as well because yeah, you had some Saturday. bits to do for Doug. Is it Doug? I, I had I had an install to do in the morning um, of a PB in a back of a van. I had Doug's van to sort out from jet jet wash cleaning. His starter motor was playing up, and I had. Um, um, uh, uh, Flanagan, a good customer, come in um, needing an engine and some other bits and bobs. So I had a f- full day till three, four o'clock, and then 
the exciting bit that we get to talk about later. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a further meeting with the next, but the next thing that I'm involved in, which I'm so excited about. So uh, I think it's the adrenaline from that, I think is the, the, the thing that's keeping me going. Yeah. You know? And it sounds like today hasn't been any easier either, but I appreciate you being on here at half seven at night. So thank you for that. Um, uh, hey, I'm in it for the long haul, mate. <laughs> um, a brew, a so, of pop. So I, I've sort of framed this as an Ask an Expert Q&A. We do one of these every couple of months. Um, Darren's got some new developments I think he wants to talk about. But in the meantime, um, have you got the live chat up, Darren? Can you see people's comments? I have. So has anybody asked any questions yet? So if there are any questions you've got about your machine, about how it works, um, technical aspects of of how the equipment uh, you know, best practices, all that sort of stuff. If you've got any of that to, uh, stuff you can't Google. Um, yeah, that's it. So, so while they're asking some questions, shall I tell you about the exciting development? That's, let, let me just adjust my cushion one second. Uh, I'm you, old now. You disappeared then. Uh, half, half your body disappeared. Oh, it's a green screen. Oh, I thought oh, yeah. you... <laughs> I've just been had it made. I sit it behind me in my little room. That's awesome. Come on, Jake. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've used the magic of uh, NVIDIA broadcast. I did have That's a um, I, I had a question asked in the Discord earlier on um, about uh, John's got a question about the uh, the unloader. Any chance you could make a video with Jake to help explain how we should be using the unloader valve and gauge, please, brother. Good effort re, uh, rerouting Jake's exhaust so he didn't have to spin it 180 degrees. Uh, <laughs> is he talking about your new appendage? Yes. my new, I forgot to post the picture, actually. I got a brilliant picture, didn't I? <laughs> have, uh, have you released your video then? Because I've not seen it. Yes. Yeah, it went out at a half five. Do you want to uh, Do you want to talk through some highlights of your video first? Yeah. Um, show your video and we'll talk about why we did what we did and then we'll go back to all of the questions and answer everybody's questions i hope what you'll keep that? i hope you're keeping tab, tabs on who's asked what then because um, oh, i'm looking well we've done the unloader one yeah let's do a video on the unloader one that's a good one can you just briefly explain what an unloader valve is and what it should do so yeah so in short um and I'll use the Karcher pumps as an example. So uh, everybody's seen how the Karcher domestic use, where you pull the trigger. When you let go of the trigger, uh, the machine stops dead. So it stops. And you pull the trigger and it starts again. And um, on our big machines, our big petrol machines, our big electric machines, they tend to, well, you can't stop the engine every time you let go of the trigger. Um, and the reason why that sort of, um, what's the words I'm looking for now? Um, it's just not practical to make it stop the engine. So what we have is we have a valve fitted to the uh, pump because all the time the engine's turning, the pump's turning, all the time the pump's turning, the pump's generating water pressure and water flow. So I have a little valve that can be called the unloader valve or the offloader valve. And what that basically does is when you let go of the trigger, the water that's being generated out of the pump can no longer get out the end of the lamp so it needs to go somewhere and this sends it down a different pipe either back into the pump to recirculate or what we do on the petrol machines because of heat and temperature we try and send it back to the tank so that's why we talk about return to tank on a load of valves and what that means is when the trigger's not being run and um, the water's coming in cold and then it's returning back to a big tank of water and it comes back in cool and it keeps the pump nice and Nice and cold. And that's normally the difference between a good, reliable, possibly slightly more expensive machine that returns that water to the tank, keeps the pump cool. You can run that pressure washer all day without pressing yeah. the trigger once and it won't overheat. Exactly. That's that's the principle behind it because you're using a bigger vat of water to keep the pump cool. Mm -hmm. Because these pumps are not um, like air-cooled or have fans on them or anything like that. These pumps are actually cooled by the water that goes into them. And obviously you've got the engine that's always getting hotter, which is warming up the gearbox, which is always warming up the pump. And I actually had my what? my adjustable unloader valve 
replaced by you guys for a slightly different setup where you have is it like a static unloader valve that's that's got a set adjustment that you can you can change it but it has to be sort of set it's a different way of doing it so your unloader valve you can get trapped pressures which are set and then do what we do but yours is a non-trapped pressure unloader valve um so when you let go of the trigger there's no trapped pressure in the line so you never notice that yeah so before when you let go of your trigger um your look at this oh, look at my hat <laughs> oh look at that i can't hear the feed by the way because i've got the i've got it turned down no i've got i've not got you i've not got the volume on we're just listening to you at the moment i was going to say i'll just voice over and uh, here we have a valve <laughs> and this onto the pump and this is going to sit here like this <laughs> <laughs> um, no but in all seriousness um there's i will i'll what i will do is i will generate a guide for people so they can see the different types of unload evolve and then i'll back it up with a video and show them how to use them and the differences between the two darren in short what is the benefit of going from an unloader valve to a needle valve like i've got here is there a, oh, okay. is it just finer adjustment or is it is there like a no. an actual technical benefit no your unloader valve that you've got is what we call a trapped pressure unloader valve all right so when you let go of the trigger all the pressure is held in line um and it's built up at 210 or 220 bar trapped in the line right your new unloader valve is what we call a flow sensitive unloader valve and that is action so the valves work differently inside it where when it sees a certain amount of flow go through it it goes into a high pressure mode and uh, stops bypassing and sends all the flow out the end of it so what you get so the benefit with the unloader valve that you've got is in the past when you've had stuff that's leaking so all the people on the chat will have uh, their machines have probably got trap pressure when they've got a gun or a hose that leaks, the machine goes rum, rum. I was I was watching um, curbside cleaning's video the other day, and you can hear it very clearly in his latest video. Before he's even pressed the trigger, it's like boom, 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 and that's it. Yeah. That must be doing so much damage to the machine because you've got this tiny leak coming from the end of the trigger. Sound of money to me, that is. Yeah, that is sound of money. So what you're doing with that is you are. Um, completely um, start stopping the machine really abruptly so you've got wear on your woodruff key so you know how they talk about the woodruff key wearing the engine is that going how, from going from gearbox to engine the key that's yeah, in between yeah any of the keyways that run it so when it starts stops like that it um it completely trashes that it also wrecks the unloader valve it also overheats the pump because it starts stopping it overruns the engine basically when you hear that noise all they're doing is running their machine into the ground so now you've got a um stop start flow sensitive on motor valve your machine will not no longer do that mm. if it's got a little bit of a tiny leak it will just remain in bypass oh i didn't know it that up, it won't ramp up and it won't go down so on these petrol machines we use that valve as as a protector for your um woodruff keys and all your other bits and bobs mm. so it, it's basically it's the same offset as using a belt there's a little bit more leeway um in what we do the other thing that you will have noticed is when you pull your trigger now um your your pressure starts a little bit slowly yeah definitely noticed just, that today just doesn't just do that it starts slowly so because of the type of unloader valve is and the lack of adjustment so they don't have a twisty knob on them. It's more of a fixed adjustment. We have to fit an additional valve to then reduce the pressure to give the flexibility. So traditionally, these used to be called steam valves, and there were a brass item that was panel mounted. So on some of the bigger, older um, trailer mounted jet washers before this current um, generation of trendy jet washes came out you had to have a panel mounted valve that you could turn up and down and all the steam valve did was lower the pressure the benefits for you mean that or anybody on the chat 
that now you've got a fixed unloader valve and you have just a needle valve on it, you can no longer overpress your pump because it's all fixed. Yeah. So you've got adjustments now in a range where you can't damage anything or and do the, anything. And there's nothing like, there's no better feeling than before. It was just a total unknown. But now I've got the little pressure gauge and you've set the unloader valve so that it maxes out 200 bar on the dot. You pull the trigger and you can see you're pulling exactly 200 bar. And it's it's great. There's no better feeling. Um, <clears throat> do you want to go through some, Let's do the, some, questions. some of these questions? I think we need to scroll back up. Um, scroll. So John was the first one about a video. Steve Heaton. Question. Can my trigger triggers be set up so the spring is slacker? I'm starting to have issues with my hand. Steve. What trigger do you have? Yeah, we need to start by knowing the one you've currently got, I suppose. The one that I'm using is, yeah. is the ST2600. Um, and that has got a little cam inside of it that allows you to, once once you've pulled it, it engages a cam. It's it's, on, it's almost on like a spring where it takes it takes all of the slack for you. You don't have to hold on to it all day because the cam sort of pushes it across for you. Um, yeah, it's marketed as, as like an easy pull. Um, yes, because the cam does it for you. The cam as, uh, um, magnifies the force that you use, so you use less force to push it over. There is some stats out there. It, I think it's 70% less force required. So once we know your gun state, We'll answer that one in full. But can you modify a trigger, or is it best to just buy a new one? Um, I don't fully understand exactly what Steve wants to do, but if he's having troubles with his hands, there are triggers out there that help, like the 2600. So mm. it would be better moving for one that that will do the job. I would, would be my... I would say, is it possible to change the spring inside the the trigger but from what i've seen there is no spring no it's like parts, a piston yeah the parts for the guns are just they're like unobtainium yeah if we were closer to the manufacturers and we had more suppliers then it'd be much easier for us to get hold of these bits mm. but now other than raiding other guns i don't see as that being a, a thing but if steve lets me know his problem i'll try and find a solution for it uh matt said Sorry. Uh, Matt says, is a dual-fed pump a common thing, and is it a good idea? So. Does that mean... Yeah. This is this is an exciting question, this one is. What does that mean? So, traditionally, um, a 21-litre pump would come from the manufacturer, uh, so the WS202 would come from the manufacturer with a dual inlet feed on it. So, two three-quarter hose pipes um, and two water filters. Um, and then as margin started to get tighter and tighter, suddenly it became a thing that you allegedly didn't need one. Allegedly. Well, would that be for coming straight from two customers' water supplies rather than having a buffer tank in between? No, no I'm interpreting that as two feeds from your buffer tank. To the machine. Okay. So, one to each so was so it not designed like that be before because buffer tanks just weren't as common or have buffer tanks always been around? Buffer tanks have always been around. People always use dustbins or farmers used, use food troughs, mm. cattle troughs. Um, the people suck out of rivers. You know, we sell salt water machines that suck out the ocean that are used on boats. Mm. That's cool. Right. So, no, suck into things. So, they always used to have two. And then as, as time um, got on and things, they wanted to cut corners, suddenly even the company that swore by it started to fit one. So we've done lots of testing over the years. And what we found is, is if you have a very good brand new three-quarter hose with no kinks, no bends, no restrictions, it'll work fine on a 21.2. However, the moment you put the slightest of squeeze 
you can actually feel the performance go down at the lamps. Is that why you, you had such an issue with my cable tie on my machine? Yes, a little bit, yes, because you were definitely restricting your machine off, right, because you were using single feed with a cable tie. So um, we built our machines with two feeds, um, mainly because when the machine is a little bit older and the pipes get whatever, right, the machine's always going to work at, at full performance. We've now found that cleaners are idiots <laughs> and they and they like to, when you put two handles on the front of a machine, which are fittings that go on it, they like to pick the machine up from them, which undoes all the fittings. So we had a, we've, we've gone to one pipe, but an inch, not three quarters. Do you, see a, do you see a lot of damage from people lifting their machine in and out of the van? Loads. Loads. It's one of the biggest killers of the machines. Smashing frames apart, smashing wheels off, bending axles, snapping and bending unloaded. We we change so many unloader valves because they get whacked in vans by stuff falling on them or people dropping stuff on them. Big deal. There's a member in my uh, Discord that I think he tipped his machine over accidentally when he was either putting it in or getting it out of the van, and he ended up with oil in the cylinders. I can't remember how he resolved it. I think he had to get it off and sent it off and serviced and stuff but i think that's oh, happened that, that's happened to two different people actually hey don't be as bad as one guy we sold a brand new alpha to somebody and he drove off with his side door open went around the roundabout and dropped his brand new machine straight out of his side door oh my god how much did that cost him i mean initially the machine that's it's a lot of money isn't it an off grand machine and it plus the vat jesus Do you know what I did? Because I felt sorry for him. What? Put it on a brand new frame. Oh. Uh, this is um, the thing with my new van. Um, everything's so different now. I, do, I don't know whether I'm forgetting to strap my ladders down. I don't know whether I've closed the door. I don't know whether I've put all my equipment back. I feel so all over the place just because it's all yeah. new. You should be able to see with all your new grips down the side. Yeah. Well, whether it's been whether there's one pipe missing, I just feel you know when you've got something new, and yeah, and it's a lot of like just driving a bigger van is crazy. It's just a mm. it's a lot more pressure, <laughs> and I'll get used to it within a week and it'll be fine. But this initial period of just driving it over to you and having everything all <laughs> fitted and sorted in the van, it, everything feels new. A nice looking van. I think it's the right van. You took some good advice. You brought the right size van. It's not too long. Who gave me that good uh, advice? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. Secret. <laughs> that was that was specialist premium support. That was. Yeah. You literally <laughs> said. I think you said H two H two. I think mine's a H. Yours is a H three. H three H two. L two. So that's it. H three L two. Yeah. Alpha length. But yeah, the L two. Oh, Lindsay Jackson's uh, put a good one in. Is Darren a millionaire yet? <laughs> he keeps claiming that he's poor, but um, I, am poor. I am poor. There's no I chance. I'll tell you a funny story. The new girl that's come to work for me, she went for a, um, she went for a meal. In the, uh, the the guy who's brought Neil Morris's old pub local to us, he's probably the closest thing I know to a multi-millionaire. And uh, he was busy telling her how I'm a multi-millionaire over the, over the bar. I mean... Self-made multi-millionaire. In terms of assets, probably. We've got over a million quid's worth of assets at PWS. Yeah. Um, that's, that's not me. And contracts. You've got the contract with the ambulance service. Contracts mean nothing. Mm. They've run out. Contract, contracts mean nothing. We, you know, six months ago we were doing a load of a load of contract work, doing one thing. Now we're doing something different. Now, three years ago we were doing two hundred and fifty thousand liters of chemical a month. A month, a quarter of a million liters of chemical a month. Mm. 
out of the special unit that you saw that's not to be videoed unit. Yeah. That's, that's a, what that was for. I had to cut, a whole, to cut a whole segment out of my video because I showed his private area. <laughs> not, oh, oh, here comes the bingo. Yeah, not, start, not that private start, area. Get um, yourself in. <laughs> Too fat late. Get yourself in. Hooper Garden right. Services says, Last week I asked Jake about a better high-pressure hose for my Parker brand machine um, as the 10 meter is provi provided is crap and stiff. Can you supply something nicer? So this is this is a little um, like 11 litre per minute petrol machine. It's like a, just a, like a little starter one. Um, I assume it's got a um, thermoplastic hose on it. Very thin. I think it's M22 both sides. But it's thermal plastic, so so if you do bend it, it feels like it's going to snap. Can't remember. It's my first machine I ever bought. I can't remember what the hose was like. Usually the cheap ones have thermal plastic stuff. Mm. Um, so any rubber hose will be better. Yes, but it'll probably cost as much as your machine to put a proper hose on it. Yeah. It depends how, how long you want as well. Do you sell like down to 10 metres? And you can put whatever yeah. fittings on. We have 500 mil on the shelf. Really? <laughs> 500, 750, 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Can you put whatever fittings you want on your hoses? We have all of our hoses, so top tip. Dazzler top tip for today. <laughs> Always make sure you buy your hoses with 3 eighths fittings on. Because then you can put whatever quick release fitting you want on the end of it, and you're not held to ransom on the fitting, which will corrode often before the hose. Mm. So if you buy one with a 22 mil on, often the 22 mils go knackered before the hose does. Whereas if you have one with three eights on, you can regularly change the three eights, stop your machine from le leaking. So you can put 22 mils on the three eights, or you can put the quick releases on. But that's a top tip. Wherever you buy them from, just spec it with thread on, not the particular quick release that you want. That's a great tip. How does hose degrade? Yeah. How often it's should great. I how often should I replace my hose? I bought a second hand one and don't use it week in, week out. Um, I can tell you from my yeah. my experience, it very much depends on how well your machine is running, um, how much vibration you're getting down the lance and whether you're dragging it around corners and walls and stuff. Um, but I'm sure Darren can speak to Having a well-running machine can drastically affect the life of the hose. But yes, and also it depends whether you're using a hot or just cold. How you store it, like you say, how you keep it is another thing. If you're constantly dipping it in hypo, for example, you're going to wreck the rubber quicker than if you're not. But rule of thumb, if you were a large employer, and you've got an employee using this, there is guidance from, I think it's HSE, or there was guidance from a body like that, that you should replace the hose every 18 months. That's actually longer than I expected, to be honest. But I've only ever used cheap hoses until I've settled on your hose, which I've got mounted on the reel now, and that's been great for... Over a year now, I guess. Can't remember when. Yeah, I bet it's been, it's been twelve months. Yeah, it's it, got was, to be. It was, was it before the show? I can't. The show is about to come down again. I can't remember, but um, either way, all, all those little um leaks that are causing your pressure washer to surge, the vibrations when you've got like a a turbo nozzle on the end of the lance, um, if you've got like a a machine itself that's vibrating because you've not got but you know a very good skid or whatever that's going to cause vibrations on the hose the hose is going to be moving backwards and forwards especially if it's wrapped around the corner of a wall it's just going to grate up against the side of the wall and eventually you're going to get hose burst as soon as you i don't know what you'd say darren but i reckon as soon as you start to see wire in the side of the hose exposed you should probably replace that what do you reckon if you are a so different rules for different people all right if you're employing somebody and the moment you start to see the metal and the hose is going to be sharp mm. technically they can 
even though they should be using it with gloves, technically they could, they could cut their hands. You will have to replace it. As a, I don't like the term one man band, but you'll know exactly what I mean. As a single operator, sole trader, um, you could go a little bit longer. Just be mindful that that it's going to catch you, catch you if you if you caught your fingers on it. Another place that people don't realise they damage the hoses is they hold onto the trigger and they raunch their hose along with the trigger. It's much better to put one hand on your hose, one hand on your trigger and pull it along so you've got some slack and then do the cleaning. Wait. So you'll and pull it out the bottom and you'll you'll damage the hose at the bottom that goes into the cuff and you damage the swivel in the bottom of the gun uh, by drilling. So don't pull dry, directly from the trigger. Take up the slack first so you've not got that harsh bend in the bottom of the trigger. And pull along as you go to your next uh, step. That's a good, good tip. Another top tip. Right, let's have a look. Dual feed a common thing. Do you use the same oil for engine and the pump? Yes, is a simple answer. There is a massive chart of different oils you can use in the engines, depending on what temperature range you are using the engines in. All right. Uh, the reality is, is in the UK we use a 10W40 or a 20W50, something like that. Uh, that same oil is completely suitable to use in the pump. Um, the gearbox, again, there is the, the, there's a chart for the pump. There's also the same for the gearbox. Again, use something like a 80 weight EP80 gearbox oil, EP80, EP90 gearbox oil, and you're absolutely fine. It's not as super critical as a high performance engine as as it is for your cars and vans um, because the single cylinder engines use uh, it's all temperature related on what oil that they use i must share the chart it'll absolutely bamboozle you because i asked our oil supplier for the one that was on the chart in the right temperature window and they were like nobody sells that they don't even make that oil mm. the manufacturers going we want this oil yeah um can you post that chart in the discord if you come across it i will find it it's at work it's on the shelf thank you i think i know the answer to this next question uh from matt he says because i remember from the last live stream he says can an electric start be fitted to a gx 390 at a later date and i i think okay. i remember you saying it can be but it will probably outweigh the cost of you just selling that machine and buying one with an electric start already fitted. It's a lot of work, isn't why, it? Why is that? <clears throat> Come on. Tell me you paid attention. I like this. Um, it's to do with, it's not to do with fastening the starter motor on. That's the easy bit. It's to do with the... Jonathan, batch. welcome. And keeping the battery... Regenerated, keeping the circuit. Job. Yeah, correct. So the the answer is yes, you can fit it, but it's really a big job to strip it down to put all the magneto setup in it for the rectifier to make it charge, and it becomes really expensive. And my advice would be to sell your Honda um, and buy either an electric start Honda or save some money and buy an electric start Vanguard. That's when you know you're talking to the right bloke because he says magneto and electro. What did you say? Rectifier, Rectifier in the same sentence, and both of those words I have no idea what they do. But anyway, <laughs> uh, can a needle valve and a gauge be fitted to my evolution? Uh, simple answer is a needle valve can be fitted to any machine. But you only need a needle valve when you've got a fixed unloader valve. So save yourself some money. You only need a needle valve when you've got a fixed unloader valve. There's no point in having one unless you've got a fixed unloader valve. So you, unless you, sorry. So you'd want to replace the unloader valve to a fixed one and then add an additional needle valve, which could probably get expensive. Yeah. Where are we? I'm just looking up. We missed a couple. Higher up, I think. That's what I'd add to the build. I'm going down one by one. We're on to uh, Danny. Higher up. Can, I've got one. Can you do a return to tank off any jet wash? Dan Tonks. Mm. 
I'm a little bit higher up. So, any no is a simple answer because some pressure washers, some pumps, have a fixed integral unloader valve. So at the cheaper end, so let's pick on the high Hyundai. Everybody talks about the high Hyundai's at the moment or the JCB. Okay, so the 4000p. For the money, a cracking but they lack the ability of being able to send the water back to the tank because they, they tend to overheat a little bit. So the um, there's a high on day on my site, by the way. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Pull that one, if you can zoom in, that'll do. So if we zoom in on that pump, you might be able to, mine might just go bigger. I've got it, the JCB one. <clears throat> so oh, it's just wrapped around it. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. I don't know if I can. Um, so try a different picture across. Um, 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 they've got some good photos though, haven't they? Of Tosh. Um, how about the one side view? Oh, the other side? Or is that a rubbish picture? How's that? Keep going back to the net one next to the one you're on left of that one. That you, one there. You're probably watching a little bit delayed. You're you're a little bit behind, I think. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So if you could see the black knob, you'll see that there's there's underneath the um pipe, you see that that black knob is part of the unloader valve. Ah. And if Jake goes to next one left, Jake. On your pictures, um, you'll see that the um, there, right? So on that there, just above where the right it is, that says mains gravity or suction. But just above there is the top of the unloader valve, and you'll see in the molding that it comes down. It's all integral, and what it does is it bypasses straight into this bit at the bottom. Mm. And it's not working on separately. So on a, on a machine where the unloader valve is integral to the pump, it's built into the pump, you can't do a return to tank. But on a normal machine, so if you pick on... I can pick on mine, let you can see it in this video now. Um, you can see my unloader valve is like external, additional, bolted onto the side of the pump. Yeah. And it's got a bolt on it bolts on sometimes they have banjo fittings on the side of the pump so have a uh, i know um, i'll find a picture and send you oh yeah that high hand is integrated as well isn't it yeah the high hand is integrated so i'm trying to find a picture of um, what they call a control set when it's fastened on the side of an unloader valve. So quite often, um, actually, I wonder if I can find one on the side of my my site. I like this. No, I We're going it. super deep on every question. This is um, I appreciate yeah. everyone who's asking questions and stuff. We're going to try and hit each one of them. Um, but don't you appreciate like how good is this that we're just doing a deep dive on every single question? So if you go to the the PWS site, mm -hmm. um, Jay, type in control set uh, in the search, and then we'll pick on the any uh, probably the VB seventy five. Yep. So that's where you'd normally see the unloader on the top. Right. So this is what they call a control set. So you'll notice that they're spaced the same as a. Um, the output and input on a pump. Mm -hmm. So I was saying some pumps don't have an unloader valve like yours. They have this called a control set on the side. Mm -hmm. And you can see the black knob would normally go on the top. And you can see how it goes in a straight line down to the bottom. Now on a pump that's got these, we can just undo those two banjo bolts and we can convert it. We can chuck that in the bin, the control set, and we can fit a VRT3 like what you had originally or a K series and we can make that be returned to tank so it depends upon the pump that you've got and the type of unloader valve i would go with all 
all proper professional machines can be converted. The prosumer stuff, probably not. Mm -hmm. Right, Luke, the unloader gauge, is it possible to add that to my build? Nah. <laughs> um, I think you mean the, the pressure gauge. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not bothered. <laughs> uh, we've got a, Luke's, Luke's got a little build going on this next week, and uh, nah, nah. I, I'll just say I'll be shit on mate. I'm not bothered. <laughs> I've had your money now. I'm not bothered. <laughs> so that is a, that is something that um, I've been trying to figure out recently as well. Is especially when using a surface cleaner, I'd like to have a set pressure that I use for every single surface. And if I can now that I've got a pressure gauge, I can nail that pressure. And I don't even have to think about it. As long as I've got the right nozzles on the end of the lance or I've got the right nozzles on the surface cleaner, I can just do the same thing every time and get the same results every time, which is really useful. That's that. And then when you start to get really professional, um, you'll use different size nozzles. I don't mean different degree nozzles. I mean different size nozzles to reduce your flow. Mm -hmm. So you might put a much smaller nozzle in Turn it to 100 bar. So I'll let you into a little secret. Some of the professional roof cleaners use smaller than their preset size in their whirlaways and turbos, and then they turn their pressure to a set rating, so they're actually reducing the amount of flow that's going out because they're running smaller jets and managing the pressure with a needle valve so they don't overrun the machine. Do you know I do this as well? Um, so my machine is 30 litres per minute, 200 bar. But what, what I've done with, I've kept one of my old turbo nozzles from my smaller machine. And when I want to use less water, if I've just got like a small area to clean, maybe there's loads of stuff around that I don't want to get splashed up and dirty and stuff. I don't want to flood the area because the drainage ain't great. I can put my smaller turbo nozzle on, turn the unloader valve down, and I'm still, it feels like I'm still getting just as much pressure as my big turbo nozzle, but it's just lighter and I'm using much less water. It's like a strategic same choice. Same principle for the roof cleaning. Mm -hmm. But what you'll have to do now is back the needle valve off a little bit to reset the pressure. Because once you start going over 200 bar or being that, that, that bypass, you know, it's uh, bypassing a load of water. Yeah. It'll start to stall your engine. It'll start to stall your engine. Stop yeah, so you just, just back off your needle valve a little bit and you rebalance it that way. Awesome. Steve Heat, question. I currently use 2 by 10 meters hose generally. Can I use more without a loss of performance? So there is a... How can I describe this now? There's loads of variables to this. To this answer, there's loads of variables. Some of that is to do with the size of hose that you're using. Um, and then obviously the performance of your machine. So your machine, if you're using, let's say, a 21 litre machine, you will get towards 60, 100 metres before you'll start to notice any tangible difference on a 3 8 hose. If you're using quarter hose, um, even past 20 metres, you'll start to notice pressure getting dropped off. There used to be a rule of thumb that after 100 metres, you'd lose five bar of performance per 10 metres further. Um, but I don't know anybody that runs any hoses that long. And the guys that do run long hoses tend to use very big bore hoses so they can keep their performance at the upper end. The only difference I notice with my 15 litre per minute machine, when I went from a 40 meter hose and then when i put my extension onto it my 10 meter extension the only difference i found it had the, exactly the same cleaning power it's just when you pull the trigger it takes a little bit longer for the water to start coming through that's, that's the only thing i noticed and because it's got a further distance to to travel mm -hmm. uh, vibros and things like that help take off fiber x's help help alleviate that a little bit we've done the electric start we've done the Degrading. The next one is Danny. Uh, have you ever used a sure flow window cleaning pump to apply hypo? Just wondering how long it will last. So, 
me personally, no. But I am working on a project that uses one of those types of pumps, but post pump injects the hypo. So it injects the hypo after the water has gone through. So the it's pump. not pulling it through the pump. It's not pulling it through the pump. Um, I mean, are, are we just talking about a twelve volt generic pump? Is that what that is? Because yeah. I don't know what that product yeah. is. That's just like a generic. That's like what a window cleaner would use for what they call soft washing or window cleaner. So I've used a gardener backpack, which has one of those pumps inside, for over a year now, and I've used Hypo in it. I've used Max Clean Pro. I've used Biocide. I've used TFR. And as long as you wash it out thoroughly and run it with some clean water through it, so you're getting all the all the um, chemical out of the hose as well. I haven't had a problem with it. The filter inside has gone a little bit rusty, like just a few little rust, rust specks on it. But other than that, it's been absolutely fine. So I, I reckon as long as you look after it, it will keep going. Hi, Jake. Hi, Darren. Hi, Greg. Uh, squeaky clean, Dave. Welcome. Which do you think Dave, is... Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dave, have you got your lunges in today? <laughs> right? That's that... all that matters at this point. I'll have you know... I managed three lunges today. I don't think Dave's lunging today. I think he's relaxing. Dave's been out and done some lunging. No, he sent me a picture which, earlier. Glenn, which do you think is best, gearbox or belt-driven machines? I don't even know what a belt-driven machine is. What is... What's the benefit of having a... Isn't it, a diesel, isn't it what you find on diesels? No. So Jetmac use a lot of belt-driven machines. So the ones that come over from Ireland, Terry makes, a lot of them are belt-driven. Basically, what's better? I need some grease in this chair. I'm sorry, if you can hear that, it's not me, it's the chair. Also, we're just very chin-up. Have you not got any focus or a camera that moves that can zoom in properly? Oh, um, you're on my integrated camera. How's that? Oh, that's much, oh am I on a different camera? Oh, Oh, I've just spotted you on a different camera. Yeah, this is the this is my webcam, and this is my laptop camera that you're seeing. Oh yeah, y you're just on my webcam. Yeah. <laughs> Never enough. Right, back on, back on. So, depending on, I'm trying to answer this in a completely unbiased and. I mean, you clearly don't supply belt-driven machines. You're you're a fan of the gearbox ones. No, I do supply belt-driven. Just give it a push. It's open. Just give it a push. Big push. Oh, wait there. Because I give it a good shot. Um, uh, you'll have to come a bit further in if you want to say hello on Jake stream. No. Is it Sonia? Yeah. She's here, yeah. Hello. She's just hot. Your face has disappeared. There she is. <laughs> Thank you for your help on Friday, by the way. Can she hear me? I don't know if she can hear me. Yeah, no, she said thanks for bringing the dog. Oh, that's okay. She enjoyed it. I thought that was a bit rough to call Mrs. Smout a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite got on with so quite well. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a nice thing to say, wasn't wow. it? Wow. I hope she's not watching this. She'll be, she'll be blood for supper. Say, I thought Mrs. Smout was lovely, and you were definitely punching. She's not Mrs. Yeah. Smout. She'd be lucky. We're not married yet. All I'm going to say is there's a reacher and a settle in your relationship, Jake. And uh, Mrs. Smout isn't the reacher. <laughs> Coming from... I'm not going to say it. What are you, what are you not going to say, mate? No, nothing. I've got pink wafers now. I'm going to be smashed off my face on sugar in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Pink wafers, two at a time. Because you don't drink anymore, do you? Is this your is this your thing now? You just intake sugar instead of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> right. What were we talking so, about? Belt driven machines. So, which one's better? A small single cylinder engine, when you do not need a belt to drive other items. A gearbox is always better, always without a doubt. There's less maintenance, less to go wrong, 
it's just better in every way. It's rare to have a gearbox failure. Occasionally they'll leak a little bit or they whatever, but they rarely go wrong. Bolts slacken off, they snap, they shred, they throw bits everywhere. Gearbox is better on a small machine when you don't need to drive anything else. So a bit of history with jet washes or plant equipment in general. You'll find that they might fit a let's talk about um traditional hot water independent machines the concept behind them so uh, like the compact or any of these van mounts right traditionally they would have a large engine much larger than the pump needs to drive it so what you'd end up with is a three cylinder or two cylinder diesel engine um driving a belt and one side of the belt would be a 15 200 and on the other side of the belt would be a 4 kva generator and they'd run a belt because they need to run a belt to drive the pump and a generator to drive the electrics to run everything else that's on the machine and in that instance you can't fit a gearbox and a belt is the best way to get to where you need to be so you need like multiple pulleys it's like a car engine you need to drive the alternator you need to drive the camshaft you need to drive multiple items and that's where a belt comes in 100 percent exactly that so what you need to so exactly that so in my opinion and i build my stuff that way if it's a small single cylinder engine and you don't need to drive anything else just fit a gearbox it's better and the the purpose of um a gearbox or like what do you call a belt drive machine what is it's not a gearbox is it or is it a belt driven gearbox no it's still about reduction a belt it's reduction. All about, it's all about taking the 3,000-odd RPM your engine's doing and making it 1,400 RPM for the pump. Oh, I thought because it was the other way around. I thought you are trying to make the engine work less to get more output from the pump. I thought you're, you're, you're going up and not down. No, it's down. Is it down? All oh, right. I thought yeah, it was... You want your you want your pump to spin slower so it lasts longer. Ah. So your engines have got bearings and stuff in them, whereas your pumps are just hardened shafts. Oh, I thought the engine, you wanted the engine to run slower so so the pump could run faster. So which you get more flow. Drive, which is why direct drive pumps um, don't last as long because they spin faster. Too fast, unnecessarily fast. Oh. Ah, that's interesting. Well, that's my Good question. That's my little nugget that I've learned today. Really good question. It comes up a lot. There'll be um, there'll be the anti gearbox police, um, which will turn up and <clears throat> talk about wood rough keys and bre breaking drive shafts and stuff like that, uh, <clears throat> and damaging engine output shafts. But if you don't leave your machine going and and have a well maintained machine, you'll never have a problem. It's like a car. You maintain a car. It will go forever, but as soon as you start allowing oil leaks or water leaks or weird noises, you know it'll start disintegrating and breaking itself. Um, should every pressure washer have a pressure gauge? I'm cold, only doing drives and patios. Should mm. Mm. not convinced. I think that when you use them. And um, you get a feel for it. So I can tell you now, I speak regularly to one of the other YouTubers, and he now never looks at his gauge. He goes completely by feel every time. He knows what he wants it to feel like. He knows how it, it expects to be, and he goes off feel. I, um, wonder, I wonder if pressure gauges are more beneficial for someone that's new. And then experience tells you by feel, you know, after you've been doing it for a couple of years and you're happy with your equipment and you're used to how things feel. Maybe that's I when you... you know, I think you answered your own question earlier. Having a gauge gives you the ability to give you a repeatable performance. Yeah. Um, so for the sake of 20 quid, fit a gauge. Yeah. It is one more thing to go wrong, by the way. Your gauge will be one of the first things that will bust a leak. Really? And um, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, they're quite pro. 
quite sensitive as well. You only got to knock them and they'll piss out over it. 20 quid. You know what I mean? Well, I suppose that's probably more common on people lifting their machines in and out of the van rather than mine that's van mounted. I guess I shouldn't have too many issues. Mm. Um, so Stee has responded and said it's the trigger that we were talking about earlier is the one that comes with the equipped to clean gear. And I know the one he means. I think it's a fixed trigger with the lance on the end. It's just a generic lance. So I don't, think, I don't think there's any way of modifying one of those. I would personally... I'm equipped to clean, and I'm not going to talk equipped to clean down. Everybody has their own price points. However, in the jet wash world, it's likely to be the entry level stuff. I would probably replace your trigger with premium trigger, something like a 2600, and your problem would probably go away. And also then you've got the... If you could get yourself one with a Q-fitting, you've got the versatility then of being able to swap lances, swap over to your surface cleaner, and you don't have to go back to the machine and switch it off every time. I found the time saving from just upgrading to that ST2600 trigger, the time saving has been notable. Hey, Mishi. Hello. Safe's here. Do you want to come speak to Darren? Say hi. He was insulting you earlier. I did not. I was sticking up for him. But he, ins he insulted me at the same time. Wow. I wasn't insulting you. <laughs> I actually pointed out to uh, my Jake. Hello. I pointed Hi. out to my Jake the reach and a settler in every relationship. And um, Jake's um, not the one that settled. He's the reacher. Taking a little bit of time to go. You also there. called her a dog. I did not at all. <laughs> it is. Wait, so I don't get it. You're the reacher. You're punching. Yeah, Aww. that's what he reckons. Cute. I think I'd do quite well for myself, personally. I reckon you're... Uh, you you're doing pretty good, aren't you, really? Wafers. Bring Coder over with some pink wafers. We're nailing them down. Nice. You love a pink wafer, don't you? Yes, that sort of stuff doesn't interest Soph anymore. She's a she's a fitness freak now. I I, I, yeah, I'm not a sweet person. I'm not a biscuit person. I've never been a biscuit person. No. You're a runner you now. Gladiator? Tell me you watched Gladiator Saturday night. We don't have terrestrial no. TV. We don't have TV. I've watched on catch-up. We don't have terrestrial TV anyway. It's the only thing on TV I watch, and it's brilliant. I've decided I'm going to write into the gladiators because I believe that that they've ticked every box, right? They've got everybody on it. They've got white people, black people. <laughs> they've got an Arab girl. They've got everybody on it except for a fat person. I want to be a fat gladiator. <laughs> that would be amazing. I want to be hippo. That's who I want to be. <laughs> you'd be you'd be sick on a TV show like that. You. Because you've actually got a, something about you as well. You got a personality. You, you'd you'd be awesome in that. I like hippo. I think it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. I might get my shirt on with hippo written. Over <laughs> I've never had a nickname, but let's roll with it. <laughs> I've had loads of nicknames. That none of them have been good. You used to be called Fish, Dickhead, didn't you? Um, no, Fishman. Yeah, Fish Fishman. Man. Yeah. That's because that she, she smells. No, because she yeah. she swims. <laughs> I thought it was because she stunk. Yeah, it was tricky knowing which one it was for. But yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a long game to that, isn't it? It's like one of those nicknames that comes from like further down the chain. It probably started with the tuna shop and ended up being the fish man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going. <laughs> Gotta go get Good ready. And you. See you later. You're off back from swimming or off out swimming oh no i'm about to go for um yeah go to the gym for a run and then a swim oh bell's done the gym tonight has she do you reckon, do you reckon she could do 200 kilograms on the leg machine bloody hell how much do i weigh i don't know 14 stone what's that in kilograms someone will do the math in the chat 2.2 14 stone 2. in kilograms 
14 stone is 88.904 kilograms. And she can do what? 200. That's like two. And, that's like two and a half of me. Mm. Jeez. She was doing a sledge in the school gym, and she got three friends stood on it and 75 kilograms. Bloody hell. <laughs> and she won a rugby match on Sunday as well. Oh. Uh, there was a bit of fuss there. There were some girls had their noses bust open and some fat lips. Fourteen-year-old girls. Actually, I've seen, I've seen men not get punched as hard as these girls. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be careful. You don't pick a fight with the wrong daughter. Jesus, it's bad. Right, do some questions, Jake. Come on, focus. Ugh. Focus. Let's do some questions. Be safe. Have a good run. So, Steve, that the twenty-six hundred is available from all good outlets, and you can have it with or without the. Uh, Q outlet. Darren. So if you can't, yes, mate. My lads go for a wee. Yeah, go for a wee. I'll try and do some more. Lovely. Apparently, the adverts on the feed tonight. Right, let's have a look down. Matt, could you, in theory, fit a ball valve between the trigger and the lance and zip tie the trigger? I'm always open. So just use the ball valve to control the water out of the lance. That's not a theory. You could do that. Um, you could definitely, well, why bother putting a trigger on? You could just put um, the lance straight into the end of a ball valve and use a ball valve for that job. H&S, if ever you got tugged, <coughs> might not like that, um, but you could um, you could definitely do it. Right, um, Darren Craig. Darren, I'm getting a new washer next week. What fitting should I be looking for? It's pretty hard to understand all of the variations. Q spigot, mini quick lease, etc. etc. Want all the lances, flat surface, compact. Okay. So a lot of a lot of that will come down to where you're buying it from. So quite often your new machine will be bundled with whatever the supplier wants to bundle it with. Quite often they might bundle it with 22 mil um the rotary fittings. The Q spigot, it would probably be rare to find that fitted to a machine out the factory unless you asked for it. The minis, you should only ever have on the very end of the lance because the minis are the ones that are the nozzle size. So the minis are the very tiny ones that go on the end. Quarter inch. Um, the whatever, yeah, the little quarters that go on the end. I would avoid the midis. There's been a trend of the midi fitting, which is the one in between the the large MTM. You had lots of midis, didn't you, when you... Yeah, that's what most generic... What did you call them? Prosumer machines. Prosumer machines, yeah. That's what they generally come with. It's either M22 or midi fittings. Mm. So I would avoid the midi. Minis on the end of the lance. Q goes between the gun and the lance. And then you want what's called a Tima type or a maxi fitting... Um, on the end, um, we fit either genuine teamers or MTM hydro couplings. We find the MTM is just a little bit better, um, which is weird. I feel weird saying that because I'm old enough to remember that teamer were the standout industry favourite for probably 30 years. It's so uh, been out. it's so difficult um, when people you see these fittings all written down when you're ordering for something online and you click the drop down box and there's about 30 different fittings and they all say slightly different things one they double because it's male and female so you've got to make sure you're buying the right one and two there's about six different options and yeah. i think the benefit of visiting someone like yourself is that you can actually view them and you can explain why they're better it's in my last video more. Walk in and ask. I, I spoke to Trackers when he was in earlier and he was saying about another dealer being his local one. I'm saying, yeah, and, and you want to support your local dealer because they're the guys that are going to get you out the shit when you're in trouble. It's not me that's 250 miles away or the cheapest person on internet for a coupling is the person that's going to get you out the, 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 the mire when you're in trouble. So you want to be buying these fittings and couplings actually from your local dealer. You mm -hmm. want to be building a relationship with your local dealer because these are the guys that are going to be looking after you. 
it might cost you a quid or two more than buying them off Amazon or the cheapest guy at the other end of the country. But it'll come back to you on the other end because they'll know where you are. They'll fit you in as a priority because you're a regular customer. I've got that experience, <laughs> that exact experience with pressure washer sales and service in Eversham. Um, I know they're slightly more expensive than something I can find on, on Amazon. But if I, if something breaks on a job and I need something either the same day or the next day, I can just drive over and they'll replace it and they'll explain what's gone wrong. And it's like, I could drive an hour, you know, an hour and 20 minutes to come visit you, which, which I'll do for the nice stuff, for the big stuff. But meanwhile, for the day to day, uh, maintenance mm. bits, I can just go to my local. And it's just feels nice having someone just around the corner. And you should, everybody should, um, Unless they're absolute morons, your locals, you should go to your local. Mm. Where are we on the questions? Well, as far as do you charge less when you wash a tarmac drive compared to block paid in? And do you follow a similar cleaning process? Well, Ricardo, I don't know any cleaning, mate, but Jake could be able to answer that question for you. Um, yeah, so generally, block paving, you have to return on a dry, on a dry day to resand it. I've got a full guide in my discord. So for the paid members, they can, um, they can get into the discord and in the guide section, I've literally got a list of all my prices for every single service I offer at the moment, just to get like an example of what I charge and the level of service that I offer. You should be tailoring it to the level of service that you offer. So if you're brand new, you're probably not going to be charging what I charge because you might not use, Chemicals, the job might take a lot longer. You might not have powerful equipment. Um, and the surface knowledge as well, that comes that comes with experience. But generally, tarmac, I'm charging £3 per square metre. Tarmac with like an additional chemical treatment, like a biocide, I'm charging £3.50 per square metre. And then block paving, which includes the sand on a dry day, um, is around about four pound per square meter, but this is going to vary up and down the country. Everywhere is different. Um, some places in Scotland they're doing block paving for one pound fifty, two pound per square meter. So you've got to consider the level of service that you offer, how new to the industry you are, how long the job's going to take you. Um, don't just copy what everyone else is doing. You've got to make sure you're covering your costs, giving the best value you can to the customer but also making sure you're leaving the job with a little bit of money in your pocket as well. Will you eventually put scaffold in? Uh, Jack, do you mean like, will I purchase a scaffolding tower? Is that for you or for me, Darren? I don't know. Um, well, no, I, I will never stop scaffolding, but part of my little announcement that we're going to do near the end, Ooh. we might make some accessories for scaffolding soon. Ooh. Um, so at the moment, the roof cleans that I'm quoting, I've got two to quote tomorrow, which is my day off actually. Um, but I've been quoting a yeah. few. Yeah. I have Saturdays and Tuesdays off and then I work Sundays. You, you must be raking it in if you're having two days a week off. I'm just not a busy fool. No, I'm joking. I've got a family. I've got kids. Um, I... Uh, at the moment, I'm looking at just renting a tower and I've got some some good friends in the industry that uh, will potentially lend me a tower as well. So I'm not looking to drop two grand on a scaffolding tower when I'm only just starting out with the roof cleaning stuff. Um, Darren, so are you saying when I pop back to have my tank fitted, I should have a one inch hose on the outlet, uh, hose inlet to my WS202? I mean, I'm using a, I'm using a three quarter. In, what am I using, Darren? Am I using a one inch hose for my thirty liter per minute pump? Yep. But before that, for um, my fifteen liter per minute machine, I was using a three quarter inch hose, and that fed just fine. Yeah. Well, this is for a two hundred two. So, so we would build it with stainless steel, like we've done with you, Jake. So, with the filter and the fittings and those great big. You've seen the great big tails that you've now got on the proper stainless ones. We will build this with the same the same bits if it comes back. 
a squeaky clean Dave, you have over one millions worth of fittings on just that one bench. <laughs> one million dollars. One million. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what leads per minute? I need an auto blast. I mustn't sign up block breathing. Um, 30.5 in FSC just doesn't cut the mustard. You're right. So a 13.5 on a flat surface cleaner is going to be really, really, really hard work. Can I be honest? Go on, mate. When it comes to flat surface cleaners on block paving, in my experience, I've tried, I've tried everything right. And I'm at the moment I'm using a 30 liter per minute machine. I've just put 15 degree nozzles on my two bar flat surface cleaner. They're the appropriate diameter for my machine. And it's still not clearing all the moss and all the weeds from between the joints of block paving. I think you're turboing. I, I honestly think I think what you're doing with that job is I think you're turboing it and then you're very quickly going over with a flat surface cleaner. I tried I, I tried flat surface cleaner first, followed by the turbo. But the issue with that is bec because I've just done the flat surface cleaner over the whole drive, I don't yeah. I don't know where I've been. I can't at least when I'm turboing, there's a very stark difference between the bits that I've cleaned and the bits that I haven't. I th I would be saying I think you want to travel a spec it. Get your turbo nozzle out, get your turbo nozzle. <laughs> get your turbo nozzle. Get your turbo nozzle. I don't I'm you not I'm not convinced that, so, I mean, some people comment and they come up in the chat and they comment on my videos and stuff and they say, I use a flat surface cleaner and I get great results. But in my experience, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I've used three different machines. I've used surface cleaners on every single one of them. Various nozzles, triple bar, double bar. None of them work as well as the turbo nozzle do. I think, I think also there is a comp there is an element of what somebody's version of a good job is versus somebody else's version of a good job. This is what I was getting at before. Right. There's a, there's a very, I've been to cars. I always use cars, right? And the word good is really subjective because one person's good could be another person's poor. Immaculate, uh, immaculate condition. And you turn up and it's got rips in the seats and dents in the doors. Right, and some people don't even see that; they don't. They're blinkered by it. So, I would say with a thirteen point five liter a minute machine, you're going to be using something like a fourteen or fifteen inch surface cleaner. Um, we have done a little bit bigger with an eighteen; it does clean okay. But you know, to really get in, you want to be using that. But on a thirty liter machine, I'd be pretty much turboing everything at that size machine. The minimum that you want to move up to, um, so that the, the most popular machine that we used to do for drive cleaning with the turbo nozzle was a 15150. Um, and that was really, that was a really popular machine until it became a dick waving contest. And you had to have a 21 litre machine before you were considered a cleaner. And now, you know, if you're a professional, you should have like a Jake or a Dave machine and it should be 30 litres upwards. Um, and that, that's that's a perception that you guys have built yourselves into to get to it. For me, um, 30 litres per minute is totally unnecessary. I was just really, I saw the opportunity to buy the machine, and I know it's future-proofing myself for big commercial work. It's totally overkill for doing driveways and patios. Yeah, I mean, knackered and worn out by the time you start doing commercial work, and you mm. can find another one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in my experience, surface cleaner... Um, one inch for every liter per minute is around about right, isn't it? And then I'm only ever using the surface cleaner really on big patios where it's worth actually pulling it out of the van. Uh, big areas where it's like, it's not going to take a lot of cleaning. The chemicals are going to do most of the work. I just want to get rid of the surface crud and then all block paving. I'm just using the turbo nozzle. Um, hi Darren, question on the Vanguard and Honda. Is there much difference in reliability and any issues with the electric starts on either? You Sorry. like you like the Vanguards now, don't you? You're stepping away from the Hondas a little bit. Do you know what? There's nothing wrong with Hondas. Right. They've been the benchmark standard 
for a really long time now. If you go on Facebook and say, what machine should I buy? Everyone recommends the Honda GX390. Right? And the only real thing wrong with the Hondas is they have that poxy decompression valve in it that goes wrong. And the people in the chat that don't know what I mean by that is when your Honda starts to get old, you'll get to a point where you'll go to pull it to start it and it'll recoil really quickly and go to snap your fingers off. Right? And that's because the decompression valve's knackered in it. And it's a big job to do. There's loads of videos on YouTube. It's not a nice job to put right. Um, and that's my little pet hate of the Honda. Can I also say, can I also say when you're pulling a pull start machine, don't just rip it out. Take up the slack first and then pull it. Because I snapped two pull starts before I knew that because I was just yanking at it. And I didn't oh, realize. Flexing, Jake. Flexing. <laughs> I just got all the machine. I just pull it out. I just have it, and it all just came apart in my hands. I'm so pull, strong. Pull the slack first, and then pull it. And also hold your trigger open as well. If you've not got an easy start valve on your pump, hold the trigger open so you're not building up pressure in the pump and the engine, and then pull it. And nine like, nine times out of ten, it will start first time. It's like you you've been to one of my training sessions. I've taught you all about it. Brilliant. Um, so, back to the question in hand. So, I don't believe that there's any tangible quality difference between the Briggs or the Honda. I think they're both eek. And this is nothing to do with us selling it. I've sold quite a few Hondas this week, um, which is unusual for us. But, again, what people want is what people want. Um, but I find the Briggs is built, built as equally as well as the Honda. But for me... It's just a little bit uh, better design because it's a newer engine. So the Briggs has got some advantages, like it's got a proper air filter on it. It's got a proper dipstick on it. It's got a proper engine oil fill on it. It's got a better way of shutting the fuel off so you don't leave it on by accident. And they do a version of electric start that's got a very powerful rectifier, which means that it can get close to running a boiler all day. Is there any difference in price to you and also, second question, is there any difference in price to the customer if they were to go for the Honda over the Vanguard? Honda Pull Start is closely priced to a Briggs Electric. Slightly lower, but close enough that it makes it worth going for the Briggs. I wouldn't have a Briggs... So, so if I was buying, I wouldn't buy the Briggs Pull Start. I would buy the Honda Pull Start, but I would always buy the Briggs Electric Start. Over the Honda? Any other. Mm hmm so, and, and that's because of the the way that the machine is set up for its new um, the new emissions and whatever. I believe that the Briggs can be a pig sometimes to pull and start on a pull cord, whereas on the electric start they go every time. As you found, you've got a Briggs goes every time on the key. Uh, I've got the Honda, the which V-twin. which takes a while. Oh, got- yeah, da- Sorry, thought- Dave's got the Briggs. Dave's got the Briggs. Dave but can tell you what he thinks. My Honda, my Honda takes a while to start every single time. Yeah, so even on the electric start. The other, the other thing with the Vanguard is they believe in their engines because they're giving a four-year warranty with them. Mm. Does the customer that buys that from you get that four-year four warranty as well? You get one year with the place that you buy it from, standard. The additional three years are back to Briggs. That's good to know. All right, so. I think you're safe buying. A jet wash really should only have a five-year hard-working lifespan anyway before you need to be thinking the next big bill, I might want to replace it. I mean, when we're looking at entry-level machines, you're probably talking less than a year. But then when you get to yeah. in the, into the professional market, five years five is to- the, uh, the target. Yeah. So five years is your professional target for a lifespan of it being used all day, every day, before it's starting to cost you a fortune. Well serviced. Some the, yeah, some of the bigger plays will change every two years because it's tax efficient mm-hmm. for them to change every two years. And, um, you know, why would you be messing around otherwise? Just wondering about the hoses now. You have a three-quarter low-pressure hose for filling the buffer tank, stroke feeding to the machine. Just wondering where to get my connections and how they they manage to fit my machine. Jonathan, just share some pictures in the Discord. And we'll point you in the right direction of what fittings you need. 
Also, by the way, um, Darren has been kind enough to... He hangs around in my Discord every day. He's got it. Have you got it on your phone? So for any of the paid members of the YouTube channel, they get into the Discord if you're a Circle member and above, and you get one-to-one -one access to Darren. You can just post post pictures. <laughs> Ask an expert. You can post pictures in the chat. You can tag him, and he will always respond. And it's just good to have you around because, um, to be honest, you're the only supplier. You're the only professional in the Discord that is active every day, which is really nice. You have to be active every day because things go wrong every day. People have questions every day. Well, this is a business environment. If you guys get a problem, right? So this could be, it doesn't matter. Say you guys, right? Any of my customers. So let's, let's ignore for a second. The, um, the exterior cleaning. Right, let's just ignore this sector for a second. But let's talk about some of my other customers and why I am the way I am. All right. So I've got a customer and they've got several food factories throughout the UK. All right. And these food factories have got big central cleaning systems, really complicated things. And they have to clean every so 12 people use this central system minimum. So it's 12 user machine and they have to clean this equipment all of the time you know why it's in operation while the, the plant's in operation and if this conveyor belt stops turning it's something like one million pounds per hour that it costs them if the conveyor belt stops turning because there's 600 employees in the place you know what i mean it's a constant yep. thing huge deal um it's exactly the same in bottling plants for uh, like lager for example so the carlin factory um uh, where, where carlin's made when that plant stops it's millions of pounds and it stops because it doesn't clean and they need to have access to somebody to put it right and they need to be available to put it right the moment it goes wrong now it costs a million pounds to get somebody like me yeah. to turn up <laughs> when something like that goes wrong supply and demand mm -hmm. right um but it's why i'm always on call because the the simple um answer to this is when when you're a business you need the equipment running all the time so we do try really hard so at the moment while we're busy we're doing a little bit of fighting fires if we're honest where we're nearly looking after the ones that are shouting the loudest with our repairs because some people can wait a few days some people can't wait a few days but it's why we're always available so I'm in the habit of rarely switching off. So if I wake up in the night for some reason, I might have half an hour answering questions at four o'clock in the morning, which is quite often I'll get asked, when do you ever sleep? Because I was answering questions at midnight. I've answered them again at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. And I've answered them on the way to work at seven o'clock in the morning. It must be so um, difficult not knowing where to turn your attention first, because even just running my business and the amount of messages that come through, Unless I've got a list, uh, like a priority list, I don't know what I'm doing, but you get people turning up unexpected throughout the day. You've got, oh, your, you've got your new Ask an Expert Facebook group. You've got all of our lads in the Discord. Yeah. Like you're nonstop. Yeah. You're literally nonstop. And I don't mind it. I, it keeps me busy. You know, um, I... I, I could do with, um, if any of you could not turn up on spec this week, that would be useful because I've got quite a bit of stuff to get done. I'm not saying there's a couple of people in the chat that have just turned up randomly today while we're really busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it would be really nice if you could just leave us alone to get some work done. Because you won't uh, you won't turn them away. You'll, you'll sit with them for an hour and sort it out. You can't, you can't turn them away. But what it meant last week is I wasn't home before midnight every day last week. Mm. Even Friday, I ended up working late. You know, and then I'm back in. I don't I try not to work weekends because I'm spending time with my nippers. And then Sunday, I was like, yay, I can have a lie in Sunday. Nope. I had to go and fetch that child back on uh, that child, my smallest. <laughs> uh, my grandma, Saturday morning. 
and then I was out at rugby all afternoon. But it wasn't rugby sitting in the rugby clubhouse drinking beer with the lads. I was doing dad trip because I was watching the under 14s girls play with no beer. No beer. So, um, not an eater. Darren, do you ship to Northern Ireland? I will if you ask me to, but don't cry at me if the shippers dick us about. I have one one star review on Google. It's because somebody ordered something from Ireland. We used a reputable shipper, and the shipper dicked us about. It left us on time, but they took something like three weeks to deliver the item. It was so, such a shit show. We're allowed to swear on this channel, by the way. Yeah, I you're fine. Um, it was such a shit show with the supplier, the, the courier, that the courier um, ended up liaising directly with the person that was being delivered to at the end of uh, at the end, and they ended up liaising to get it done. So I will I will ship it, and I'll pick a shipper of your choice to ship it. Um, but if we do send it on time and we package it well. Please don't moan at us because customs or shippers have, have give us the dick about. So Aria is asking, uh, I've got a Citroen Berlingo, VX390, and a wheelie bin tank. Uh, always taking it in and out of the van. Could you install it for me like Jake so that I've got the door open? What would it cost? Well, I'm going to pull it up on the How website now. So you can, I would type in skid X at the top first. Jake can start with a cheap one. Um, okay. I don't think you'll find it there. I got it. It's on the front page. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, something that you would take your, your machine off of your trolley and off of your wheels and mount it on this skid, which is like an X shaped skid. There's some pictures of it installed. Dave's got one of these. Yeah. So Dave, Dave's got exactly this in the back of his van. That's the base of it. So the only other additional cost to this is you'd have to go from your 10, 20 meter hose to like a mounted, probably 40 or at least 50 meter hose reel, um, as well as, you know, mounting this in the van. And it means you can keep either keep your wheelie bin or you can upgrade to like a proper fitted tank, uh, which PWS sell as well, which I've just bought which is the um, tower, the upright 250 litre tower buffer tank, which I'm really, really pleased with. Oh yeah, you had a tower tank, haven't you? Yeah, it's so much skinnier. Such a space saver. It's perfect space. You, you'll see in the video, you, you literally shout. It couldn't, <laughs> I think you say something like it couldn't have fit any better. Like it's literally the perfect size. <laughs> I, I found that tank by accident. I actually ordered it by mistake, the first one that came. I meant to order a lay down and I ordered that by mistake. And it turned up and I put it in the first van and I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is the holy grail. Yeah. This is the only bin replacement. It's not too expensive. It's not too big. It's not too heavy. You can fit it flush against your bulkhead. And it's about that wide. There's, there's like nothing to it. The other um, so that's what I'm going to Sorry, the other option is the Alpha PB frame. Um, and this comes with, you could put the reel on top. You've got the skid. You can put your engine and pump. And Darren, um, he doesn't, um, you're not prejudiced. It doesn't matter where the machine comes from. You'll fit it to, to one of your frames, no problem. No, not racist. Not I racist. <laughs> Black, pink, blue, silver. Honestly, I'm a. I'm, you know, how you guys get all upset when you see the five pound of five pound, the fifty pound drive people turn up. Yeah. Oh no! What are we doing? Are you me? Right. The person that was going to buy from the fifty pound um, drive, the person who was going to employ you for the fifty pound drive one, was never actually going to employ you, Jake, at three hundred quid for the. Then same they're drive. never. They're never your customer. Uh, never your customer. And it's exactly the same with, with, with clean equipment stuff. People that are going to buy the 800 quid frame or whatever. Uh, I don't know why I started telling you about this. Why would we start talking about this? Jake? No idea. No idea, but it it's a very, oh, it's a very valid point. Back. People do moan so about what, it, driving the price yes. down. So what I was starting to get at is it doesn't matter where you brought your stuff from. 
or who you go to or who your regular supplier is there is enough work out there for everybody i don't get offended or upset if you go and buy from somewhere else obviously i'm going to rib you yeah turn off, it's got a different sticker on it you know what i mean expect sort of um uh, i want to say abuse but i mean banter of course uh, especially if it's orange or you know there's there's stuff from an air conditioning place uh, kicking around on it or i think son you put it. some of your stickers on my on my frame <laughs> I think they look good. They do. Nice contrast. <laughs> or down on the last hole. <laughs> do, you, do your first wash down and they come off. I'm just waiting for uh, you to rebrand to green. It's over. To orange. It's over. No, I mean, you've got the green army thing going. I don't know why you're still wearing a blue t shirt. Right. Let's do it. Let's have it out. <laughs> Where's the brand authenticity? Is it Green Army or is it Blue Army? Right. Get your computer up now. <laughs> right, on the screen. Get it up. Right. You don't, have, don't have to tell me twice. Hi, Aqua-green.co.uk Aqua-green.co.uk What's a hyphen? Is that a... A, a little one in the middle. Oh. No. I, I got it. Straight line. Yeah, what am I looking at? Automotive commercial cleaning solutions. Right, click on equipment. <gasps> They've got the alpha pressure washers. Right, every alpha pressure washer that goes out is an aqua green product. Aqua green is the brand. It's an aqua green product. Like our chemical products, like our boilers, like our other stuff. So imagine that PWS is like your Stratstone dealership. Yeah. And Aqua Green is BMW. It's a brand. Yeah. We also have several other companies that are going to be taking on the brand to distribute it um, probably before summer. Fair enough. We already distribute the chemical throughout the country on the Aqua Green brand. Um, it would be very difficult for me to sell it if it uh, to other dealers like be a distributor if it said pws all over it. yeah there is two distinct differences it's why the rutland pumps is one of the next questions why the rutland pump says water tech on it so we can sell it to other people it's why the air conditioning company says rocket wash on it ah uh, okay i get it yeah that it's makes sense because it doesn't have their name on it um we anything that is unbranded or our own design we will always put an aqua green sticker on it every time. I get it. I didn't even consider that before. Yeah. So we've had it out now. Everybody knows. <laughs> What's right. the next question? On. I think it's the old Rutland pumps one. My old Rutland pumps hose reel that came on my machine sliced chunks out of the hose because the edge was quite sharp. But my new PWS hose reel is as soft as Teddy's ar as soft as a Teddy's ass on the hose. That's very good to know, Smart Exterior. Thank you very much. Hold on. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a Kiam 3600 diesel key start. I nearly spat my drink out then. Did you say Kiam? Is it Kiam? Kiam? I you... always said Kiam, but either way, I have something that was cheap with a diesel engine. <laughs> Come on. Um, are the PWS hoses green or are they boring black? Do you... Honestly, when I ordered mine, I was expecting a nice green stripe all the way down the side, a nice obnoxious green. But when I received it, it was black. But I can confirm, after visiting PWS last week, all the hoses on the shelf have a racing stripe down the side that's bright green. They do. They do. Uh, yeah, just... Sorry. I have, Dan, I have, oh, okay. Is he just telling us he has a car? Yeah, yeah. Everybody in the chat, please feel sorry for Dan. <laughs> He'll get there in the end. He'll be upgrading at some point over the next 12 months. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, SC Dave, have you used your new Chinese device yet? I don't know if Dave's still in the chat. He's currently, I don't know if he wants me to tell you where he is. Um, but he said he couldn't join the live stream tonight, although he's 
He has been in the he live did, stream. He did, say hello. he did pop in and say hello. Um, can you put a secondary unloader valve onto a machine to add a bypass? A secondary unloader valve. I mean, my when I went to when I asked Pressure Washer Sales and Service in Eversham for a return to tank bypass, they couldn't do it with my current unloader valve. They had to replace the. Uh, I, I might be speaking out of turn, actually. The one that was on your machine when you arrived at mine. No, this. No, oh. this is on the KM machine. Yeah, because it's probably integrated. KM, yeah. Um, I think I asked. I asked for a different load of valve because my my shuttle spring kept disintegrating, so they replaced that, and that also had a return to tank bypass on it, which was a bonus. So you can right. So usually secondary stuff are called safety valves, and they or over pressure valves. So they dump if there's a problem with your main unloader. I have in the other end um, done something special with electronic um, changeover valves where there's been two unloaders on a machine where a changeover valve has sent the feed down one or the other uh, for different preset pressures. That sounds stressful. Uh, I had to sign a non-disclosure for it, so I can't tell you. Anymore. You've just told us. You've literally just told us the whole. Can tell you is it's in. Uh, I I was involved in a product that went worldwide, that did very clever and special stuff. You spoke to me about that, but you have disclosed that information to me before, so you're looking to get you're looking to get sued pretty soon. When I tell the world about it, um, a Re I, I both just fitted a twenty. Is that the one that you got from us, Rico Rees? I have just sold a. Um, a twenty-one two hundred. How do you say in the name of that pump? Is it a Italian? Is that an Italian name? Anovi Reverberi. Yeah, we just say A and R. A and R. Don't even try. <laughs> and so Steve's got a three eighths inch hose, and I need a thirty to forty meter one for this job. It's a fifteen liter per minute machine. You'll see. You'll probably notice no difference, Steve. Extended. Yeah, not not worth talking about. Um, Can I use Harmac? Is that a no no? There you go. Where's that? One for you. Up a little bit. Real washers. I'm oh, sorry, Lindsay Jackson. Can I use Hypo on Tarmac? Uh, no. Or is that? No. Date. Oh, getting loads of adverts. Jake, you're trying to monetize your channel too much. Scroll up a little bit. Oh, you're such a cheapskate. You get me on. And then you. Okay, I bring all these extra followers tonight to see me, and you're like, I want to coin it in. I'm going to turn on extra adverts. If you're not monetizing your content, you're a fool. But you're turning all the people off. They're not turning off. There's more viewers here tonight than there has ever been on this live stream, and it's all because of you. It isn't because of me. We make a good duo. It's good fun. I said to you, when you came on Friday, and you were like, Oh, so is Patterson, so is Patterson, so is Patterson. Right, what did you say, Mrs. Mate. Patterson? What are you talking about? Kevin and Perry, and it's... So oh, is yeah. <laughs> you know, you're skulking around a little bit to start off with before you realised what was actually going on. Um, and we were we were, we were were get, getting the job sorted out. I just took a little bit of... I'm not going to lie, I worked very slow on Friday because I was dead on my feet. <laughs> I was giving it... I was I, giving it. Good I didn't vibes. say anything. I was giving it good vibes, but I wasn't very happy. Look, I I spend a lot of time making content for this channel. Is it so bad that I want to monetize it? Yes, adverts are now turned on on the live streams. I dabbled with it before. I've had a few people mention it. Is that such a bad thing? How often are the adverts playing? Is it really interrupting the viewing experience? I'll be that's honest with you. That's what we need to know, isn't I'll it? I'll be honest with you. If it's if it's taken away from the viewing experience and you're not getting your questions answered because you're watching an advert instead, I will turn the adverts <laughs> off. But can you... Can you... <laughs> your boy's trying to earn a bit of money. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman now. 
with a really, really good machine. Yeah. Got a really nice setup now. It's orange, oh. and it does the awesome. job. Awesome. Yeah. It's got an appendage. It's, it's got one a, of the only ones out. It's, it's got, got an appendage. appendage. You've got to share that photo. Have you got it. Is your phone linked to the cloud? Yeah, I'll stick it on the Discord. Um, can you go back to that question that you just mentioned? Because I can't seem to find it. Question was higher up. It said, "I'm using lots of no. Um, can hypo? Can I use hypo on tarmac, or is that a no-no? Don't use hypo on tarmac because you'll. I don't know if you bleach it or bleach the organic contaminants that are in the tarmac, but it goes a different color when you put hypo I, on it. Um, non-professional opinion on hypo on tarmac. Go on. So I don't do cleaning, but I also um, will tell you that I have no real knowledge of the chemical products and the surfaces and all the rest of it. And actually, when it's come to roof cleaning, slightly different. I've had to spend some time with my customers to understand how they want to use the kit so that I can make it better for them so they can get the best out of the kit that they've got. I, however, did clean my drive at my new house with Hypo. And it's a tarmac drive with brick edges. And it was my top strength Hypo that I used. And whether it's because my drive is already a little bit old, it's not fully jet black. There was no change in the colours. All the moss got killed because of the bleach and all the rest of it. Um, and it did a nice job. But I wouldn't use it on a nice jet black tarmac drive because I could see that tearing the tar and bleaching the colour out of it. So I think, from my personal experience, hypo on tarmac bleaches the organic contaminants. So the moss, um, any algae that's in the tarmac, it bleaches it and it makes the tarmac brighter. So it looks like it's stained the tarmac. But that's not tarmac that I'm washing. That's always um runoff from a driveway that i'm cleaning and it runs over the path and you get this this nasty bright mark that the hypo's left on the path but i'm not cleaning that section so i i've seen other people in the industry they're using hypo on tarmac and then once they've cleaned it they get fantastic results it looks great afterwards so i don't know if hypo necessarily damages tarmac but i think it will bleach any contaminants that are in the tarmac so if you if if you're using hypo first and then pressure washing it, you might be fine. But I've got no experience with that. I don't know. I need another way. Is that all right? Can I go, Dad? I'm going to do some questions. All right. Because you just opened me up now. I'm holding you up. Yeah, good questions here. If you have a fixed unloader valve, can you just use the throttle to regulate the flow? Um, yes and no, Matt. So. When your unloader valve is fixed at the maximum uh, bypass point, so, so the, the high point, if you take too much throttle off, when you let go of the trigger, your engine will stall. So, yes, you can a little bit, but you can't um, uh, You can't come too far down because it will stall um, is the answer to that one. Smart exterior. If I wanted a twin turbo nozzle set up on my Lance for a 21-200 machine, I couldn't have... So you'd have two O threes. Always go. Um, if you're um, splitting a size, always round down. Um, you you can round up, and, and some companies will give you the advice to round up. My advice would be round down because as it starts to wear, you'll get into its operating window. Whereas when you start using the larger ones to start off with, the more you use it, the further away from the operating window you get. Anybody got a link for three-quarter hose connectors? Um, I would actually say with the three-quarter hose connectors, Google Neato couplings um, or look on our site for them and then find your local dealer with them. How do you spell um, that? N-I-T-O. They're the funky ones that you've got in your on your machine now. You know the great big one with the, the hole in it? Yep. Um, so that's called a Neato coupling. Um, there's loads of different sizes. We probably haven't got all the different sizes on there, but they're your high flow couplings. Neato um, are. The... Oh, MTM. Oh. Is MTM that's Hydro high... the same as Neato? No, that's the wrong picture. Somebody's put the wrong picture on. Oh, okay. That. Uh, yeah, that's a ba- take that one off. Take that one off. That's a bad picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Neato, 
is that yeah. a slightly different size to the T? Yes, Teamers, yes. Teamer. Vito's low pressure. Teamer is high pressure. Right. Uh, where's the best place to get a garden and backpack ASAP? Um, you're gonna Amazon. you're gonna struggle to find anywhere in the UK that will deliver you a garden a backpack. There's plenty of places in Scotland that supply them, but you can only collect, which is weird. All... Even Gardener themselves are sold out. Okay, um, are the gates needed to install? Depends on your machine. So some pumps have a little port on the front of the machine. You can just unscrew and screw in like Jake's, um, and others you will have to. Um, put a T-piece in like we did on Dave's. Um, we put a T-piece in on Dave's. Um, wondering what you advise to do with end-of-life parts. Machines and so on, not straight away after running away. It's not Greta fan. So what a busy company would consider to be end-of-life, which is a machine that goes wrong regular, will quite often get repaired and appear on the second-hand market. I believe your machine, Jake, is is possibly what the company who owned it. It was one they took out of their fleet because they didn't want to run it all day every day. It was probably um, it probably had some sort of fault. They rebuilt it. They put a brand new pump on it from uh, Rutland Pumps. I think it was a. It what was that name again? R and R. R and A and R. You you got an interpump on yours? Or was it interpump? Yeah. Um, I saw the bill for that pump. It was over a grand. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you so there's a big jump. So when you go into the V twins, I still I I still can't get my head around for domestic cleaning. It's massive overkill. But when you go into that size pump, it is big money. And same as when you go two when you go over two hundred bar, two fifty bar upwards, everything's mega money. You have to have different accessories, different fitties, different couplings. If you get to three hundred bar, different hoses, different attachments, different. It's is that generally for drain cleaning, drain jetting and stuff that you go over 250? I don't know. People use it for concrete cutting and other stuff. Mm. Just, I mean, in this industry, there's been a lot of dick waving on their Facebook. And I saw somebody the other day, somebody was trying to run a 300 or a 350. I, I built a 350 bar machine for somebody the other week. Yeah. I, I personally, I, I build the kit. I understand the kit. I just don't understand why you would need it for the job that you're doing. I think it's just a bit too, too much. Yeah. Um, ah, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie is the person that brought the pump off us to do a job. Oh, sorry. Go back um, a little bit. Go back. Hunts says, are the gauges well, easy to install? I was just saying about the some of them got ports that you can take off. Oh my bad. I missed. I, I went for a wee yeah. wee, didn't I? What well, advice do you about the end of parts? They're on about you being 88 kilograms here. <laughs> I was heavier than that when I left school. So not only is there a slight delay on the chat, but we're trying to hit every single question. So you're going to post a question. Yeah. It's probably going to be 10 or, 10 or 20 minutes before we actually get to it. So sorry about that. We are trying. Uh, right, Darren, do you recommend a hot box? So. Homework. Simple. Homework time. Homework. We gave somebody homework the other week. Homework. Um, and, I, and I say the same thing to everybody when it comes to hot water. When you try to clean your dishes, try and clean it with cold water and then have a go with cleaning it with hot water and work out what the difference is. And the same applies to any cleaning pretty much on any surface. Um, so, for example, where a hot water on a drive will come into its own is greases and fats. So your bird shit, your dog piss, your um, tire marks, your rubber tire marks that mm -hmm. you get, hot water will make it quicker. Oil stains. Better. Oil stains, although I think you need to flame oil stains off um, with, a weed, with the weed flamer. You need to burn them out if you can. Also, but, sensitive surfaces on like heritage properties or like surfaces like limestone honed limestone or honed sandstone where the the lichen and the organic staining isn't on the surface like you'd normally expect it's actually ingrained deep underneath the surface and using steam it's it's actually not high pressure is it? it's fairly low pressure 100 bar maybe 
Um, no, less than nah. that. 30, 20 to 30 bar. Really? And then using steam, you might get a much more effective clean than you would using 200 bar with a turbo nozzle, potentially etching the surface using less chemicals because you're killing and removing the organic contaminants. It might not be perfect first time, but it's definitely going to mean you're going to use less chemicals on that surface. And on those surfaces where you, there's, um, what are those stone window sills called that are made up of like a composite? Um, do you know what I'm talking about? The like yellowy orange st stone window sills. Say that again. Stone window sills. Yeah, it's like it's like a yellowy stone window sill. It's like it's made of like a cast composite of materials. And if you use high pressure on one of those to try and get all the black spots and the litching out of it, you can feel it flaking against your face. You can literally feel it bouncing back off and flaking against your face. But if you were to use low pressure steam on that first, you'll get rid of the majority of it. Then you can put your chemical treatment on after that, and it's going to be much more effective. You're just going to damage surfaces if you're using too much pressure. Whereas I think steam allows you to use less pressure and it's a more effective clean. But how would I know? I haven't got steam, have I, Darren? Yet. 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 What do oh, you, just tell them. What do you tell mean? Them what the plan, tell them what the plan is, Jake. Tell them what we're planning for content that they might really like. Go on, let the cat out the bag. What's going to happen in a few weeks' time? When we've both got a bit of time to do it. If you say it now, it means yeah, I'm holding you to it. It's going to happen anyway, unless you're a sausage and don't turn. <laughs> sausage. <laughs> um, no. So originally so what, on Friday, you can knob off, right? I'm going to tell everybody now, right? That's it. So um, knob off. Did you just tell me to knob, knob off? off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Friday, the plan was Jake was going to come up. We we're going to go through his machine. Because, um, and you've been quite honest about it. You've built it yourself. You've done your own bits. I think you've done your own install. You've got all of your channel to do it. And um, there's a few bits that irritated me as a professional on it. And I figured that we would just um, make it right. And we did. We put all the nice bits on it and we made it right. And if we'd have got a little bit more time, um, the plan was to fit a boiler. However, the day before... Jake turned up on the Thursday. His boiler that we'd built for Jake and everybody knows as a waiting list for all of our stuff. Uh, I sold it to a man. So there wasn't a boiler. What did the man look like? I'm not telling you. All right, but we sold it. Was he like the inspector in Pink Panther? <laughs> I don't know, but he had money, so it went. So... <laughs> So then we thought what would be fun is we'd get Jake to build his own boiler. So the plan was Friday in the afternoon, we were going to get Jake out the back and we were going to get the tools out and uh, he was going to film actually building his own boiler and going through the components because when we thought about it, it actually makes really good content, especially for you guys on this channel that like the technical aspect of it which is why there's been 1,800 whatever people watching tonight or whatever it is, because you like the technical aspect of it, and we thought that would be a good thing to do. However, Friday came, we had a big breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame the food. <laughs> we did a little bit more on your machine than what we intended on doing. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We, um, we really... We got to a point where we were probably past the cutoff of having enough time to do it. So I, I messaged Darren the night before with a few prerequisites that I wanted to upgrade. Um, pressure gauge, different tank, um, exhaust. That I mean, the exhaust took, what, an additional half an hour, 45 minutes to install that opposite direction return. And so that it was my fault that things took a little bit longer than they should have. To MacGyver a few things, didn't we? That's what you, it wasn't just off the shelf. We had to spend a bit of time, yeah, plotting, planning, and and getting there. So, uh, so in a few weeks, you will be up. Your machine's now prepped, ready, uh, and we're going to pop a boiler in, and it'll be ace. But not only we're going to pop a boiler in, but you're going to come up for the afternoon and you're going to build your own boiler, 
and do your own content. You're, by the way, you're still building your own. Well, building your own. I was going to, I wanted to do it with Sonia, but she doesn't want to be on camera by the sounds of it. I was going to put a time lapse up next to us, but she wasn't a big fan of that. So she was going to get Chris to do it with me. And then uh, we ran out of time. Okay. She doesn't know it yet, but we'll get Sonia to do it just to prove that even a girl can work on these things. Even a girl. Doesn't she make them anyway? She knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> Does she not want to be on camera? Just so for future reference, so that I know. Does she not want to be on camera? No, she'll be fine. You sure? About it. Okay. Yeah, just uh, once the thing is, and I say this all the time, I'm so comfortable doing this because I do a lot of it. Okay, so because of my toy cars and the other stuff that I do, I do lots of this type of YouTube stuff. I do lots of, of, of podcasts. I do lots of the videoing. And as Dave will say, when Dave came, I treat it as fun. You know what I mean? I've done TV work. Believe it or not, I've done TV work. You're a celebrity, Darren. Yeah. I thought you were my. doing that then. Oh, my. Um. But anyway, um, so I'm quite comfortable doing it. It doesn't bother me. And for other people, you know exactly what it's like. The moment a camera gets pushed in the face, they suddenly shit it and they're like, oh, no. Do you know what? I'm so used to doing my own YouTube videos and stuff and putting a camera in my own face. And then when I went to work with Squeaky Clean Dave and he came over with his phone, he was recording me. I was like, uh, um, um. <laughs> it's so weird being on the opposite end of it. It's because you don't hold the power of editing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. 2600 or ST265 trigger, big difference in price. But seeing the same. What's the I 2635? Think I think it's just higher bar rated. So for 400 bar machines. And I think that the 2600 is 300-ish bar. Uh, off the top of my head. Just type in ST2600. Let's read the specs on them. I don't advertise a 2635. So if you just bring up the 2600... There's a lot of stuff that you don't have on the website, isn't there? Oh, yeah, I've got... Uh, I don't have the 2800s in. Has it got the specs? On this that? goes up to 310. Yeah, so the, the two, I can tell you now, the only difference is the 2635 goes up to 400 bar. And just as I was saying earlier, the bigger the bar, the more's the money. Yeah. The guns over with more. And also, in this game... You'll see you'll you'll see on Amazon um on the cheaper machines that you'll find on Amazon, they brag about four thousand PSI and all this nonsense, but it's like the flow is the most important thing when it comes to pressure washing driveways and patios. Every... Don't worry right. too much right. about the PSI. Correct. Did you use a surface cleaner with a fifteen litre running machine? You know what, right? The fifteen litre machine, uh, I've got a guy called one of the guys that have got the Hyundai, but Lee Groves is active in all the forums. He uses the Hyundai 4000. Basically, he came in, he brought the Hyundai 4000P, junked all of the accessories that came with it, and got us to basically bolt an Alpha Ultimate pack to it. So it had our expensive and good hose, a 2600, the longer lances, the 18-inch surface cleaner, and he brought a hot box to use with the Hyundai. Yeah. So he still spent... He still spent, I don't know, four grand or whatever, but he got a ready to go set up and he, I'm going to say cheaped out on the high on now, but you know exactly what I mean when I say that. Mm -hmm. a budget machine. We were all the right accessories. He uses that machine every single day and the bloody thing doesn't go wrong. So when people say to me, oh, high on now, oh. well, like, that has that been. That has oh, been the case. That has been the case that you'll buy a Hyundai machine off Amazon and then something breaks and you realise no one in the UK will fix it for you. They won't service it and you can't actually order the parts. But now that you're supplying a Hyundai machine, you can get all the parts for it and you will service it. Um, but to answer your question, Ellen J, I use I used my, my machine before this one was a 15 litre per minute 3700 PR from Kiam or equipped to clean, Kiam, however you say it. And I was using an 18 inch surface cleaner and I'd use it on patios, you know, natural stone, um, slate, Indian sandstone, all that sort of stuff. And it, it worked absolutely fine. You're not going to get results on block paving. 
but big patios and it'll work perfectly. Um, I was told it's pointless using a surface cleaner until you're at least at 21 litres per minute machine. No, that's not true. 15 litres per minute is, is fine for an 18 inch surface cleaner. I'd say if you're going to go for a 20, lit uh, a 20 inch surface cleaner, that's the point where you want to upgrade to like a 21 litre per minute machine. But it depends what sort of results you're going to get. Don't over don't overestimate the power of a surface cleaner. I, I think people generally get disappointed most of the time. Learning, yeah. uh, learning a lot from the Discord. Uh, I think I've just learning a lot from the Discord group as well, mate. Thanks, real jet washes. Um, awesome. You're not a. I've done the um, hypo one. Real, Sorry, mate. I've, I've jumped in the chat. That's no, okay. Uh, real jet washes. You you don't um, you don't have a little badge next to your name. I wonder if your membership's expired. But can I use hypo on tarmac? I think we've been through that. Um, what? what about Lonsin. Is it Lonsin? I thought it was Lonkin. Lonkin, Lonsin. I've been saying it wrong. I've, I've called him Lonsin. Thinking you're like, oh, Chinese, oh, Lonsin. I used to. I, <laughs> I used to um, read it so quickly. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was Lincoln. Lincoln. I, I've heard people call him a Lonkin. Yeah. Um. So. I I only get to see the bad. So I don't sell them. So I only I rarely see them to service them. I only ever see them when they're knackered. And if I, you'd like some knackered longkins, I've got loads of them at my place. I think equipped to clean, um they base all of their machines on the longkin. I think Rutland pumps do some longkin machines, is that right? And I, I don't know if AC pressure washers do. Yeah, it's just building budget machines. It's a budget engine for a budget machine. Okay. Um, it's my same thoughts about the Chinese pumps. So equipped to clean, use the Chinese pumps. The Kayams are Chinese pumps. So they're again, it's you. It's just budget. I don't. I. I it's hard to try and big budget stuff up. Because when it's used in a professional environment, it just doesn't last. But by the same token, for the money, they're brilliant because they get you out working and earning. Uh, so it's a very it's a very difficult um, place to be in. I don't sell them because I only see the trouble. So I try to avoid the budget end of the market, and I've introduced just one budget machine, which is the Hyundai, and I've gone look. If you want budget, this is the best of the rest. This is where we're, this is where we're placing our money because it has a pump that we can get all of the parts for. So if we get let down on pump parts, we can buy the parts, and we're banking on the engine being pretty good uh, with limited support from my own night. And, and that's me. That that is my journey where I've I'm tight. I buy cheap stuff, and I started out with the cheapest machine you could buy. It was like a three hundred and five pound. Parker brand well, petrol oh, pressure washer. Um, and that broke within six months, but it started my business. It was a thing that I, I used for six months. It paid for itself within a week and it allowed me to buy a van. It allowed me to upgrade to my next pressure washer, which was a Lonkin or Lonsin um, 15 litre per minute machine from Equip to Clean. And that machine, I would still, even though I had issues with it, I would still recommend at 900 quid, you know, if you're on a budget and you don't want to take out finance and you haven't got savings, that machine earned so much money for, for my business and it kickstarted my business. I can't not recommend it, even though I had issues with it. And even though it's not the most reliable of machines. Yes, if you've got savings or yes, if you want to do finance or if you want to get take out a loan or whatever, go for a proper machine like something that Darren sells. And you're looking at upwards of what two grand for like a proper Honda Briggs? About two grand. About about two grand. Yeah. Upward. Start about two grand. That's yeah, that's, that's the way to start if you've if you've got the money behind you, and you know you're. Not, our stuff isn't our stuff, and we are not geared for beginners. Yeah. Right. We 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 haven't got the marketing team. 
we haven't got the the turnover. We haven't got everything in place, like the the, the turnover of, of stock to deal with beginners. We just we're just not at that level. And I say to everybody, they go, "Oh, I'm so glad we found you." And I'm like, "Well, actually, you're the same as all of our customers because you go out and buy something first, it goes wrong, you struggle to find it, or you want to upgrade, and the natural path is to a company like us." And there's only a handful of us in the country. But equally, I didn't know whether this was going to be the industry for me. I didn't know how long I was going to stick with pressure washing. So I bought a cheap machine, something that worked, something that would get me going and that was capable. Regardless of how reliable it is, I just wanted something that was capable and it served me well. And it it, it got me to the point where I am today. And so I can't not recommend those cheaper machines just because they're oh, less reliable. I think I, I I believe in that, which I find it, which is why when I talk about them, it's quite difficult to try and be positive about them. Well, you're a supplier and you're technically a competitor, but you're you're a different level, aren't you? Yeah, I'm not a competitor. Uh, people often go to me, oh, you, oh, you must be a competitor. Oh, equipped to clean the competition, air conditioning, and whatever is a competitor. We're not, right, because we're all competing at different ends of the market. Mm -hmm. You're equipped to clean, in my world, is your 50-quid drive, people, right? So equipped to clean is the 50-quid drive man. A person that's going to employ somebody at 50-quid to clean the I drive. don't know. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair because I've done commercial jobs with that equipped to clean machine. Okay, 50 quid is the wrong. What I'm getting at is... The people that are going to buy one of those was never going to buy one of mine. That's the point I'm making. Yeah, that's fair. Because I was in that position. Yeah, that's fair. So the analogy, I was using the 50 quid drive man as an analogy. I wasn't making out that they were 50 quid. I'm just using that as an analogy, mm -hmm. right? So the people that were going to buy those were never, ever, ever going to come and buy mine because we're at different points in the market. I never had we're that not, money. I never had money to buy your machine. We're not direct competitors. We might be in the same industry, but we're not because we're doing it at different ends of the market. Yep. You know, um, and I'm cool with that. I, that's not a, I, I don't, like I say, I don't want to talk them down because some of the stuff for the price point that, that is out there on the market is good stuff. I think that there is some cheap stuff by all of the brands where they over egg how good they are in a professional environment. But, that's every brand. That's all of them, all the way across the board. It isn't one particular, and I don't think that that is um, unique to the cleaning industry. That something is over egged how good it is. Um, so there is a definitely with the more budget end of the machine, because they advertise the Wilkes as being a professional machine. I mean that Parker yeah. brand machine that I bought clearly said at the bottom of the page this is not designed for commercial use it's a hobbyist right. machine right. so i expected that it is. to break oh well, that is good that is um my issue is when suppliers they don't stay in their lane and they start <laughs> they start offering training courses on stuff they have no idea about and it's like you're trying to sell something that you aren't like just last week, the 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 how and i rep ran me up last week right and it, it's no secret that they have approached me to build them in a, a commercial range of equipment and there's been negotiations about that right so the rep rings me up last week and they're like oh ring in to tell you there's going to be a sale do I want to buy more stuff? Or well, what's in the sale? Is there any chat what's in the sale? Do I need to match? You know, because we have, annoyingly we have to follow the prices that are about everywhere. Yep. And make sure everybody gets a good deal. And you know what? If the four thousand p's coming up on a cheap deal, I'll have twenty of them because they're good sellers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nope. The four thousand p on its own wasn't coming up for sale. However. The 4000p with a what size flat surface cleaner is on sale. What have Hyundai and their marketing team bundled with their 15 litre jet wash to prove to the world that they know nothing about jet washes? Probably like a 30 inch surface cleaner. <laughs> 20 
I think it's 23 or 25 inches. Yeah, it's just not, it's not appropriate, said, is it? Who, who, who at your place is deciding these things? And it's the same with some, some suppliers that are in their business starter packs. They're supplying 1,000 litre IBCs as buffer tanks with a little 15 litre per minute machine. Like, how can you say any more that you don't know what you're supplying? You know what I mean? Like, I'm using a 30 litre per minute machine and I've got a 250 litre buffer tank and it works perfectly fine. To be absolutely clear... I actually like the Hyundai 4000P. I think for the money, I think it's brilliant. Like you like some of the Kaya machines. For the money, they're brilliant, yep. right? Brilliant. Um, but for a marketing strategy like that, just proves that that they need they need a spe- these distributors need an actual specialist. They them on track they need there. an advisor. They need someone that's in the industry advising them. Hey mate, hey mate, I'll do it. I will do it. I just want 120 grand a year. I, I will do it. I just, I just don't. Um, I feel bad for the people that are buying those starter packs, get, I, getting I like getting bad advice, and they're selling them on the premise that they are professional grade, industry standard machines, super powerful, and they're going to last forever. And it's like 12 months down the line. I don't know. Um, they've got their place. They have their place, but don't pretend to be something you're not. That's that's my beef with it as well. That's, that's truthfully, that's my beef. I'd, I've got no problem with it being a budget machine. Mm-hmm. If they advertised it as yeah. a budget professional yes. machine, that would be fine. But would they get the customers? Would they get no. the customers advertising it as a budget machine? So they're in a predicament as well. They can't and say, you know, this is a cheap machine. Oh, oh it's so much pill. That's... I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Can they? They can't say this is a cheap machine. Buy this and then upgrade. So, uh, so they're in a predicament the, as well. They don't do the upgrade. That's the problem. The best one that I think that what's the best machine that they have that that, that the budget place that does those things advertise. Look, we're not picking on equipped to clean at all. This is just an example that I'm quite aware of because I follow them. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd rather not get drawn into. No, actually... uh, we're not. I'm not criticising Equipped to Clean at all. What's, um, what's the what's the best machine? Well, they've just put out. The they've just put out these uh, 25 liter per minute Gorilla machines, and it's a big beastie. It's got a hose reel on top. Um, it's the Lonkin right, so engine. Let, so let's see what pumps fitted to. So let's see the side I view. Th- I think they're unbranded. I think I don't think it talks about the pump but but again provided because that is extremely cheap for a 25 yes. litre per minute machine 15 uh, 1600 quid including that is so cheap for what you get with this and that's very admirable for someone who wants to get into that yeah you know, if you want that sort of flow and you want that sort of psi absolutely Which fine are you, on, are you on their pressure washers yeah, so this is the Gorilla 25 litre per minute, 15 horsepower so petrol pressure. Let's ignore the Gorilla for a second, right? They advertise a GX390. Yeah, they've started doing Hondas earlier last year. They started doing Hondas. Now they do have a Honda. And this is what I mean Honda. about like swerving into a different lane. You're You're moving into a different market here. By offering a Honda yeah. machine, it's clearly a more premium machine. Like, what are you? Are you budget or are you premium? And the problem with that is, if they'd have used a branded pump on that machine with a quality unloader valve, which wouldn't cost you much more money than what that's advertised for, right? Because the problem with that is the accessories. So, at fourteen twelve, um. And that will have a 10 meter hose gun and lance. To guess, what does it come with? 13 horsepower. Let's do a value check. Oh, Come this one, this one's a GX270. It's not a 390. GX. The one I'm looking at, I'm looking at a GX390. So, it, 
damage. 15 litre per minute. Uh, I'm looking at... So it's got 10 metres high pressure hose. Right, and that is... 14... And the one I'm looking at is 14, 12, 50. Yeah, the that. I've got that one. Right, so... Let's pick on... So that's the oh, same. That's the same pump that I had with mine. By the looks of it, with the Kiam three seven hundred PR. Yeah. It's just got so, a different different engine, and by the looks of it, that's like an unbranded pump, isn't it? It's one of the ch Chinese ones. To just throw away. They're really poor so, quality. So what you're saying, if they were to pair that machine with a branded pump, a recognised pump. The price point would be, the price point would be so much higher. I'm, I'm just looking. I'm looking at it now to get to give the value between the two, right? So I'm just looking at one of the same engine, but on our frame, right, with a 10 meter hose and gun. So similarish package, right? Theirs is on at 14.12 net, and ours is on at 17.06, right? Plus that. So that. Well, yeah, they're both nets, right? Yeah. So, so the difference between the two is, I'm going to get my calculator out because I don't, I can't do maths like that at this time of night. Honestly, every so, time they post a new product, I am shocked at the price. It's always much cheaper than what you'd expect. So, right. So there's two hundred ninety-four pounds difference, right? Net between uh, an alpha and theirs. And which pump are you supplying with yours? So ours is the A&R pump. And are you? Right. what sort of trigger are you supplying with yours? So on our ready-to-work pack, um, we will do a ST2600. Okay, so this is just a generic sort of static lance that's got everything connected. Yeah, right. So you will get on ours... So I'm just trying to do a... a a value fact check because this actually is the first time that they've done something with a similar engine on yep that we can actually is it better value to buy the one with the cayenne pump on or to spend a little bit more where where is the value you know what i mean that's, that's fair I'm yeah that's fair um, and also and also they're they're dominating google searches as well if you type in the pressure washer they're one of the first websites that pops up. So they're controlling most of the market to be fair. And so if they can sell at a slightly lower price point, regardless of the pump, because people that are just entering the industry, they don't know the difference between different pumps. They don't know the difference between different lances and triggers and whatever. Yeah, exactly that. So the good of the lance that they've got there with their, the little fittings on, right? So that's got MIDI QR fittings on it, a single wire hose. Right, ours is a twin wire hose with proper MTM fittings on it. Right, so let's just say that the gun's 55 quid. I'm telling you now that the pump that's fitted to that is a for the 300 quid difference, there's no easy start valve on it. That's got a trapped um, um, control set on the end of it, so it isn't returned to tank. Yeah. So for 300 quid more, you get bundled with it the quick-release gun that you'd upgrade to anyway. Yep. An easy start valve that you'd only pay to put on it. From experience, yep. You'd pay to put on it, right? And I reckon that that alone would start to eat up most of that three. Oh, and the better quality hose with the fittings, right? That alone will start to eat up that 300 quid. And that's you will still have the Chinese pump fitted. But do you care if you're just starting out in the industry? Because me, two years ago, I didn't care. I just wanted the cheaper machine. No, it isn't about care. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't know. Back, yeah. Would you go back to having a cheap-ass gun without your QR fittings now? No. No, and that's not because you don't care. That's because you didn't know. It's simply because you don't know. Yeah. There'll be stacks of those that will turn up at my place to have proper pumps fitted to them. And proper and load of valves at some point. Yeah, so I think my issue here is you, they're supplying the Honda machine to try and enter into that upper level of 
um, you know, reliability and to capture that side of the industry as well as, as the beginners, because everyone recommends the GX390. They think, okay, we've got to get the GX390 in, um, but see if we can still get away with selling it with this cheaper pump on it. I don't, uh, and like you say, well, the KMs, that's their pump. So that, that pump's their imported pump. That's their brand. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. Um, this isn't a sales pitch for PWS, and this isn't. And, and this we isn't. Any yeah. To go again. And this isn't that we're dunking on equipped to clean either. I think they've both got their place. But my issue is when they start to merge into the more expensive market, but they're still, um, they're not offering the full package. Like, you can't offer the full package. And still charge sixteen hundred quid. It doesn't exist, and so you've got to wonder where they're cutting the corners. And I don't even know if I can say that because but it's the pump. That all, all I, I could tell you now that those pumps, those pumps, you can buy retail for about eighty quid, mm. and you'll be hard pushed to find any of the other quality inter pumps for less than four hundred. Yeah. If I was just starting out, I'd be like, I'd buy that and I'd be like, I've got my GX390, amazing. I've got a high power pressure washer. I've got a, t a 10, 20 meter hose. I'd be very, very satisfied with that product. It's cheaper than anything else on the market. I'd be extremely satisfied. But I know for a fact in six to 12 months, you're going to be wanting to upgrade most components on that machine. So that's, that's the, that's the drawback, isn't it? I suppose, but I'm, I'm looking at there. I'm looking at what I think it's the long the, the one at 912 quid. That's the one I bought. You know what? For the money, for the money, that's a good machine. You could upgrade the pumper to later date on that. That still represent reasonable value. Hmm. You know, they're, they're cheap. They've got a good point. So some of the products actually look quite nice. I think I think the V-Twin that they've done, you know what? If you got that on a proper pump, so for those of you that know in the chat, that know about the chat about return to tank and why it's done, you'll know how important it is on something like a V-Twin to have that returning back to the tank. Yeah. Um. And and they they're fitting it out the factory without a return to tank. So how important is the pump? Because the, admirably, they're trying to offer the best engines they can because they've just started supplying the Hondas. But they still want to keep the price point low, and so they're they're supplying the the cheaper the cheap sort of generic pump. pump. So it's well, fair enough, gorilla, isn't it? Yeah, that Gorilla machine's got a lift off hose reel on the top. How neat's that idea? Mm. Now let's talk let's talk positives for a minute right i'm looking at that gorilla machine which is incredibly cheap isn't it um, and it's so cheap that i saw the email because i'm subscribed to their their emails it came through and i was like jesus 25 liters per minute and it's how much that is that is dirt cheap but to get it right so you could use that all day, every day, and yep. not to go wrong. And that's the difference. Got a pair stack uh, on it. Right, let's stop beating up on equipped to clean. I don't we're, think we're, we're beating on. up. I think we're being quite fair. Um, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Yeah, definitely. I'm, 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 I'm genuinely. I, I, we just did a little fact check, and they. What's the word I'm going to say? That they were good way into the market. Yeah. But they don't necessarily offer great value if you can afford to buy better quality stuff. Yeah, and I think don't don't go outside of your lane. If you're going to offer offer cheap budget equipment, stay in your lane. I've been exchanging emails with Kieran from Equip Equipped Clean over the last couple of weeks, and I just think they need to figure out who they are and what they want to do. Should we go back to some questions? Because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, right? Um, Jake, apparently you need to give me 25% of your takings for tonight uh, for just being on the chat. All right, I owe you £6. 
<laughs> no, cheers, mate. Thanks, pal. <laughs> you can buy dinner next. Okay. Uh, right. How often should you change the oil in the engine and the pump and gearbox? I'd, li magnetic I'd like to know this. There'll be service hours posted with your engine and your pump will also have service hours in its manual. It's something like 250 hours is for the oil. But I would say with oils, always do it by sight. So if the oil looks manky and minging and horrible, even if you've only done 10 jobs with it, change it again. Can I go for another wee, Dad? What have you been drinking tonight? Um, Bud Light and Jim Beam whiskey. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. It's the whiskey. I've, I've, have another I'm desperate every half an hour. <laughs> to answer your question, 250 hours is the book, but if it looks horrible in your pump, change it more often than, say, with your gearbox. Um... Generally, stay away from the oils with detergents in it, is the uh, usual. But every pump is slightly different. Um, how is Jake's orange frame mounted to the van? Are you bolted to the... Right. So since Jake's frame does not have the water tank attached to it, and it only weighs around 100 kilograms, um, we elected to tech screw it through the floor because those things are rated about 250 kilograms each. And it should be sufficient because it's not top heavy. It's very low. And it's just to stop it from sliding about. It is also just about touching the uh, bulkhead. Thoughts on a 20-inch surface cleaner with a 15 litre per minute washer? A uh, bit big um, is the answer to that. But what I will say is not every 20-inch surface cleaner is created the same. Turn it upside down. Have a look how small the bar is inside. If it's a cheap 20-inch surface cleaner, it may only have a 16 or 17-inch bar on the inside. And in that case, it might work okay. I didn't know that. Didn't. Uh, also, take into consideration the height of the wheels and also which nozzles you've got on there as well. Yeah, enough work out there for everyone saying window cleaning could drive the prices down. It can drive the prices down, but only for a short period of time. What I mean by that is, and we'll go back to the £50 drive men, we all know they turn up at the start of the season, but by mid-season, they're already struggling. By late season, they've run out of money and gone and got a job. It's exactly the same in any of uh, any company, in any industry. Generally, unless the cheap people, um, that's good quality and cheap, um, there's that um, there's that triangle, isn't there? There's time, cost, quality, and you can't have all three. You can only pick two. Unless you're really expensive. <laughs> well, you, right? Yeah, if you you're expensive, have... it's not cheap, but it can be done fast and to a yeah, high so quality. Yes, yes, you can do. Yes, yeah, you're right. I was explaining to my friend Rich the other day. It's like um, you can offer. A very good service like uh, i'm i'm in this game for the long haul and when i'm looking at my customers and doing work for my customers it's because i want them to call me back next year i could be super cheap i could do half a job i could get in and out and get paid but that customer's not going to call me back next year so i'm treating every single person as if they're a lifelong customer so i want to develop me, that relationship i don't do any job because i want to make a quick quid out of somebody no not interested. Um, is there any reputable pressure washing service shops down south? Whereabouts down south, Jake? Um, I can recommend Lee at uh, West Country in Yeovil. Tell him you know me. Ask for the Darren discount, and uh, you'll be okay. Speaking of the Darren Number discount, one. do my viewers get any sort of PWS discount? I think it's about time, Darren. I know we've got the five percent on the triggers. Hey, did what? you did you just gag? I'm not, I'm not even getting a cut out of the YouTube. Come on, Jake. Man's gotta eat. 
Um, yes, but we'll do something in the Discord, I think, not on the YouTube channel. Good idea. I think if we're going to do something, um, let's do it on the Discord and not on the YouTube. Yep. And if the guys want to pick something on the YouTube that they want a discount on, whether it be low pressure couplings because the flavor of the month or I think I think it should be a generic discount code for the whole website. The, uh, I, I'm struggling with internet. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I can still see your eyes moving. I know because I'm messing around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Right. Um, let's have a look. Um, I'm trying, I've guys. Got... I'm trying. All right. <laughs> where, where have I gone now? I've just, I've missed a bit here. Sorry. Can where you ship to Ireland? We've been through that, Michael. Um... How far up there, uh, Darren? C for X jets. What would you suggest when I'm working with my Alpha Carry? Also, you're going to be making a load of. Load of them. I keep getting asked about a load of owls and revs. Maybe when Jake's up next, we'll do a video. I'll make, do the video. Yeah, you can do the voiceover. Uh, because my problem is, whenever I talk about anything technical, I go off on a tangent, and I think I possibly go a bit too deep sometimes. Possibly, uh, but there is an element that we need to st stop at a point. Do you know what I mean? So, I do want to do a video. You need so you need someone like me to keep you on track, don't you? That's what it is. I just think it's when you're in a team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To be honest, I could have any numbskull on the other side of that. It wouldn't make any difference. The content would be good tonight. So C for X Jets, does that has he posted a link? Because you we can't see your links. If you've posted any links in the chat, they don't appear. Um what was your opinion on X Jets, Darren? I know you've got quite a controversial one. I think it's hot take HSE turn up. Because you're atomizing chemicals into the air in an uncontrolled fashion. And somebody somewhere is going to get blinded by some hypo or something or other that's flying through the air. And there's going to be a shake-up in the industry. And I think X-Jets are quite a fair old culprit for doing that. And I believe that they're the wrong product to be used in such a way. Especially with the dangerous chemicals that we use. And I think that if you spoke to any of the proper bona fide professional suppliers, they would give you the same sound advice. And that is, do not atomize dangerous products into the air. Always spray chemicals in a controlled manner. I um, think they're I so... That with an X -jet. I think they're so niche. I don't think any HSE reps... No, they exist. And if one of them caught on to the fact that we're spraying hypo and foaming it up, or even biocide, some people spray biocide through an X-Jet, and biocide is so floaty and bubbly, and it will just float all the way down the street. But you catch a bit of wind, and it will go back. It goes all over you. It'll be a Karen neighbour that isn't happy with what you're doing, right, that will get sprayed in the face. And it'll st it stinks. And they'll, they'll, they'll. Uh, I'm sure getting bleach, uh, you know, the bleach in the concentrate that we use, getting in your eyes is going to be pretty fucking, pretty dangerous. There's kids watching this, Darren. Uh, apologies, everybody. Apologies. There's kids that are just looking at starting their business. Pretty flaming dangerous. Thank you. Uh, you're right. Um, HSE are not going to be looking at it particularly, but somebody's going to get injured at some point. I've been saying it for a little while now. And that's um, that's not the experienced people that know exactly what they're doing. They know the settings on their X-Jet that work well. They can point it down towards the ground, and they know exactly how it works. It's the people that are new to the industry. They know the X-Jet is the go-to tool, and they think, I can use this for everything. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, so... You know, that's a thing. Right. Good for him. Darren, did you get some oil drain pipes made up? I've had a delivery of pipes come today. I need to open it. Is this the product uh, that you're selling? Is this a, a product or is this something that people have to ask you for? Because I've seen that? this. I've seen this on some of the Facebook pages where 
instead of servicing yeah. your engine by undoing the oil plug and like having to tip your engine to the side try not to get oil everywhere you can actually just like, yeah but they're like a million quid for a bit of pipe so you have to so you screw in a drain pipe that's got a tap on it then you fill your engine with oil and next we're time gonna tap, we're going to put a, a fasten bung in the end so you can't accidentally knock it open and drain all the oil out right. of the engine. Right, and then you next, it pick it off. next time you come to service your engine, you pull the bung out, and it just drains out, and it's so much easier because you can control where the oil is going to go. Is this yeah. a product that people can actually buy from you, or do they have to request it specifically? It hasn't arrived yet. When it arrives, it'll be all on the website. It might be in the pallet today. Um, I've got a pallet of things turn up. How long have we got yeah. you, Darren? Are you? Half past quarter to. Okay. Uh, it is saying they're missing the answers when the adverts run over. Who said that? Yeah, you miss answers. Ah. Run all the adverts you can. Going to need it to afford getting your new van ladder remounted straight. Did you? Darren hasn't watched the video, but I bolted my new ladder on the back of the van, and it's slightly wonky. And I know it's slightly wonky, and now everyone else knows it's slightly wonky, and I'm. Could have got a professional to do it. I watched you drill, right? And <laughs> the holes that you drilled are wonky, right? So I could have told you before you started to drill that. They are. The back. It was going on on the wonk. They are. Right, let's have a look. A lot of off-the-shelf washers are made for multiple brands. Any ideas who makes the Nelson Diesel? Show me a picture, and I will give you a clue. Tracy, thank you so much. Keep those adverts coming. I'm going to buy an Evolution Electric Start 15 litre per minute 200 bar. Is this a good machine? Compared to what? Yeah, let's be let's be. Someone that wants to, at least five years out of their machine. They're working in an industrial scale. They're doing. Domestic and commercial jobs. Honestly. You know, the only thing not to like about the evolution, this is the only thing, okay? So if you're buying a new machine, things to make sure you buy that are right. So it doesn't matter where you buy them from. You want to make sure it's got a quality engine on it, a gearbox, a quality gearbox, a quality pump, and you make sure you're knowing what you're getting into with the accessories. So there's so many machines that are out there that are cheap or cheaper than the next machine, but it's because they've got a hard fastened water inlet, which then bends on the fitting, which creates air coming into it because it's not quick release. So it's got crappy one wire um, hose on it or a cheap gun like we saw on the other one or just, a cheap pump. Just so we're clear, where is the evolution? Who supplies the evolution? Is it Rutland Pumps? No, there's loads of people. It's made by dual pumps, the Evolution machine is. So it's something that we could have got to buy. So the Evolution name comes from the fact it's fitted with an interpump Evolution pump, which is the newer generation read cheaper pump that interpump make. So it's not, so this is the bit I was going to get to about the only thing to be mindful of with the Evolution pump is while it is an interpump, and it is a quality pump compared to the other stuff we've been talking about tonight. It's not the same grade pump as your traditional 202 pump or the A&Rs like what we fit. So it's like a if you were to stack the machines in order with the Hyundai being about uh, the Kayams being here, for example, um, you would have the Evolution pump here and then you would have the sort of stuff that we make or, or some of the other people make with the other pumps. So it's a recognised budget pump. It's probably a bit more than a budget. It's a bit better than a budget pump. But out of the industrial pumps, it is the budget one. Mm -hmm. um, is a fair assumption. Our higher loan machine has got an evolution pump on it. They work perfectly. They've got a reasonable lifespan. They're just not as good as the, the other pumps. What I would say is if you're going to buy the evolution, just check you're getting the value that you want because of the accessories that are with it. Don't get too focused on the price. Pay very close attention to your, to your fittings and couplings because they start to get really expensive. And that, it doesn't matter where you buy it from, 
because the, you decide that you want to move to, let's say, the 2600 gun, you know that you're 50 odd quid in plus the VAT for the gun, plus 10 so quid for each spigot. If you want to have an upgraded hose or a longer hose, you know, in it for the hose. If it's got epoxy MIDI couplings on it or 22 mil rotaries, you might want to put MTMs on it. Suddenly at 20 odd quid a pair, that pump that was 150 quid cheaper than the next one that's got a quality pump on it, but all the accessories isn't such a good deal. Mm -hmm. so, but, saying, but they don't, like you said before, they don't know. They don't know. The machine, uh, if it's in my budget and I can afford one but can't afford the next step, the Evolution is a good machine. Um, right. Hypo, yeah. Hypo might break down the oil in the tarmac. I didn't know there was oil in the tarmac. I know there's... Um, there's uh... Tar is oil. Is it? Tar is very crude oil. It's not very well-refined oil. Oh. Um... Can can PWS make a catheter for Jake? That's a very good question. No, what we're going to do next month is we're just going to replace Jake with a host that doesn't need to go for a pee all the time. Am I a host? Oh, God, I feel so important. Hello? Hello? I came to Hello. you with my issue before, didn't I? I said I've got an issue with my bladder, I think. I did, and I, I, looked, I, looked, at, yeah, I looked at it, and um, I can't do anything with the wart. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You think I you you suggested I might have diabetes? Uh, it is a it is a right, Darren. Is Jetmac a good supplier? Harry Price at Jetmac is an excellent supplier, but you won't get any warranty in the UK. So the belt drive machines. Make sure you know what you're buying. You will get exactly what you order. It will arrive on time. There's nothing wrong with Terry in Ireland, but be mindful that you'll probably be buying a belt drive machine on a galvanized frame with no warranty support in the UK. So you buy it, you're on your own, you pay your money, you take your risk. It's not the same as buying a machine from any UK supplier where you can take it back to them and moan if it's gone wrong. Tracy says, who sells training courses that aren't staining that staying in their lane i want to go on a training course which one should i avoid um <clears throat> what do you want to tell them why you said that jake because there's a company that advertises a training course which is really a day just to get you to go up and have a go with any machines tell the truth no <laughs> <laughs> go on training courses where Mm -hmm. uh, we'll come back to that one um, so training courses so what I can tell you about training courses you want to know about chemical products go on the pure seal yep. training course thank you Darren that was um, I'm probably going to do something with the jet washes for some time next year well I'll probably do a jet wash 101 <coughs> are you alright sorry carry on <laughs> that whiskey can't always drink can't always drink it's getting um, messy I'll probably, do, I'll probably do something like a jet wash 101 where you can come up and have three quarters of a day with us I'll show you safe use of the machine I'll also show you basic stuff um, to keep you going when you're on site and probably do a recommended tool pack for you to carry common issues so, yeah, basic issues. Stuff to keep you going when you're on site. If you think that's a good idea, let Jake, who we know in the Discord, let us know on here, and I will definitely make that happen. And honestly, moment, you're a professional in the industry that builds machines from scratch, and you service and supply parts and all that sort of stuff. So you've got the knowledge to actually back up the idea of a training course. Avoid the ones that haven't got hands on with the equipment the tools the chemicals whatever people like pure seal they've got years of experience they create chemicals they supply chemicals and they know exactly what suits each surface someone like darren would be the ideal person to 
as long as you're not saying this is how you clean each individual surface because you don't know that because you're no, not hands on the tools no, it would have nothing to do with actual cleaning nothing at all about actual cleaning just the equipment how to use the equipment um, how to best use the equipment how to do basic maintenance on the equipment and how to fix basic problems that you should know about when you're out on site. I think that'd be so, so valuable. Like Servicing uh, back, your equipment. You you yes, you yes. you get the money back from doing a course like that. Servicing your yeah. equipment every year on your own. It'd pay for itself, wouldn't it, really? Christopher's got a slightly different question. He says the Evolution Electric Start is 15 litres a minute at 250 bar. So I would recommend specking that as a 21200. Um, the cleaning performance is better from a 21200. Um, much, much better cleaning. Um, and also better resale. Uh, we'll carry on. I'll carry on. I missed that one. Is Jetmac a good supplier? We've done that one. Training courses. Uh, the pumps are triplex with Parker seals on the car machines. Yeah, I read that. Uh, triplex isn't the brand of pump. Triplex is because it's got three pistons. That's why they call it a triplex. What's that? What's, what's going on? What's with the uh, jumper? Chinese Pepsi. Oh, okay. Uh, it feels like a price because an actual price. Yeah, we want a discount, says Tracy. Uh, you're going to let dry. Will boilers ever reduce in size or even go flatter? See, I ignored that okay. then. It's the blatant disregard for the comments in the chat. Why? What? Where? Where? Which? Which one have I missed? Yeah, we want a discount. Where does it say that? Where have I gone past that? Tracy. Where? Where's Tracy? I'm not that far down. I'm still up here. I'm still up at um, <laughs> JP Bradley. Here. Will Bull has never reduced in size or even flatter. Fair enough. My bad. I'm skipping ahead. Uh, right. So. I think that the boilers are in the same situation and scenario as what your household boilers are, like your combi boiler or your boiler for your central heat. Speaking of which, could you service your own boiler at home if you wanted to? Because it's the same sort of tech. If it wasn't gas, yes. Oh. So oil, oil heaters I can do because it's the same tech. I can do a lot of the work on my own boiler, but because I'm not gas safe, um, there's some elements of it I can't do. Mm -hmm. But the principles of the gas boiler at home are exactly the same as a hot box and a pressure washer. Your boiler has a circulation pump in it. Your boiler has a heat chamber in it. Your boiler has a flame that eats up the heat chamber. Same principle. Sorry for so interrupting. That's all right, mate. So I think that, that the... The boilers, I think they've evolved to a size. The problem is to, to run these big machines through it. Um, my missus has just sent me a message, right, from the other room because she's obviously watching live. Uh, she didn't say anything about not appearing on your tube, by the way. No. Says you definitely aren't gas safe. <laughs> now, what <laughs> What she's referring to is what you can't see in my room up there is I decided I was going to drill a hole through to put the internet cable from the kitchen into my office because I wanted to be directly coupled to the router. Mm -hmm. Good move. Good move. Yeah, except I drilled through the gas main for the house. Did you? I didn't. I thought that stuff only happened in YouTube videos. No, I drilled through the gas main for the house. And I wasn't satisfied with just drilling it the once. Um, I actually put, I actually put four dents in the pipe. Did you go through it? Are you leaking gas? Did I go through it, Jake? Jeez. Did I go through it? Well, what size hole are you drilling? That's like twenty mil. There, I also drilled it there whilst trying a different position in the wall, and here. Um, so yeah, so don't do home DIY. A different position um, in the wall on the same horizontal axis. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, uh, we're we're digressing a little bit. Um, so no, so in, what I'm getting at is because of the size of the machine and the size of the boiler needed, it's there's something like a 70 to 100 kilowatt boiler. I think you're going to need that sort of size to do it. What I do think will change is I think that we're going to end up with um, pumps that run a certain amount of hot water through the pump and they have a smaller boiler that boosts it. So that the, the, the only way to get a smaller boiler would be to warm your water tank in your van to 40 degrees and then have a smaller boiler to take it to 40 degrees upwards. Um, I may have done that technology on the thing I can't talk about where we preheated the water to give a faster two steam um, thing. Um, right, so how much is the Gorilla machine? I think it was about 1,300 quid. Uh, Christopher McPhee, two and a half grand he's paying for it. Maybe you should come and talk to PWS or any other reputable supplier. For two and a half grand, you can get quite a nice machine. Lee, what time does PWS open in the morning? Depends how late I'm on chat tonight, doesn't it? No, Ron will be there from 8.30 in the morning, possibly earlier. I've got a feeling you're going to get a bit of an influx in the morning. Costa, uh, Joe, I've been looking at the PWS starting kit. It's not really a starter kit, mate. It's a professional kit with professional stuff. Can you just um, turn up at Darren's for the day and he will sort you out, or do you have to have an appointment? Do you know what you need to want? Know what you wanting beforehand. And what you come before. You love in people turning up unannounced. Oh, you told yeah, me you fun. love it. When I'm when I'm when I'm pla- when I've got stuff planned for the day. You look, let, let's be honest about this. If you come in and you want to buy some fittings and a gun, by all means, turn up. Come and buy stuff. Come for a brew. Come for a natter. I'll find half an hour for you or whatever it takes. Do you know what I mean? Um, what I would say is if you're wanting proper amount of work doing on your machine, even if you're not sure what you want, but you want like a service and a plumbing, for example, where you want it plumbing into a tank, book it in so we can uh, we can allocate some proper time for you. Um, uh, <clears throat> Quick question. War, quick, quick opinion on the Watertech GX390. What could Darrow offer himself at this price for a beginner? So, what we were talking about earlier about machines being cheaper because they have cheaper parts and cheaper bits on it. I can match the Watertech machine. However, it won't have all the nice bits on it. It will have no quick release on the water inlet. It'll have 22 mils. It'll have a cheaper hose on it. Um, it'll be a direct match for match. Um, so again, it comes down to the price that you're willing to spend um, on on the stuff and what your plan is going forwards. So I do know that the Watertex GX390 is fitted with the Mazzoni pump, which is actually a much lesser pump. It's it's in the it's less than an Evolution pump. So it's one worse than an evolution pump than any pump is on the scale. Um, it doesn't come with any of the QRs or anything like that. The Jex 390 is nice. Ben over at Rutland, good company. Um, they'll probably have stock on the shelf for you as well. Um, so there's no issues with that. Um, again, it just depends on what you want to do. Like I say, pay close attention to the accessories that are bundled with it to make a big difference to the price. Steve, for two and a half case, I'm going to get some quality from Darren. Yep. Clean Core have advertised training at over a thousand pounds today. I've just looked at that. Holy, holy moly. Roof cleaning, training wow. for a grand. I was thinking, I was thinking four people at 250 quid. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I mean, for something like a ten till three, so you could don't have to have a hotel. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, I thought that would quite be a a reasonable 
thing. You'd have to flesh it out and make sure there's enough in there to justify 250 quid. But they want me to get good advice. There could be an accident <clears> with an S dog. Exactly. The vet with all those dog drops dead. We want a discount code. Haha. <laughs> Can't skip it twice. <laughs> 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 Uh, I hit a gas pipe in my previous job. It's easily done. Seriously. Even I can hit a gas pipe. It is very easily done. How e difficult is it to add an electric start on my JCB or any jet washer? So it'll be much harder on the JCB or the high on dies or any of the budget ones that don't have an electric start brother in their family. Okay. I only know that the Honda's you can get the starter motor on easily. <sighs> but the other stuff is more complicated to add to it. I do know on the bricks, you can't put the um you can't put the the you can't physically fit the start. Don't laugh at me. No, I'm laughing at Craig. Yeah. Craig. A smart BJ for fifteen percent off. <laughs> Oh, we've actually reached the bottom. That's amazing. Finally, at 25 to 11, we reached the bottom. Um, what I'm getting at is, unless there's a brother in the family or a sister in the family of engines, it's very difficult to do. So I know with the Briggs, there isn't the slot available on the non-electric start to actually fit the starter motor to it. Um, given that the cost of engines, I think, have reduced, so you can get a Briggs and Stratton electric start for around 700 it's probably not um, worth it. I made a big mistake of buying the P1 PE Ion die. 50 million. Trying to match accessories is a nightmare. Do you do refurbished machines, Darren? LRS, if you are very quick and you have money to spend, I had come in on Saturday a Alpha PB electric start fitted with a Vibro X that, um, although it's six months old, it was used once on the day it left us. Um, and the gentleman who I've given him most of his money back on it, um, his mum got the cancer and is very poorly and he was unable to set up his business. I don't expect it to be at my place long, but you're going to need three grand. If you line your ladders up, Jake, I'll send you a McFlurry. Does that mean you want to drill more holes? I'm not drilling it. I'm yeah. sure there's some fine adjustment that I can make on those ladders. Bigger hole. Bigger hole. And just shimmy it. Shimmy it in the bigger hole. Yeah. Proper much. Then use silicon around the bolt so you don't get water ingress into your door. Uh, what would you use to because you know you drill a hole in a van is there anything I can spray on it or use in it to stop it rusting oh, yeah, just silicon there's, I'm sure yeah. there's some red stuff that you mean to stop where you've actually drilled so where the paint's bare yeah yeah the, you can spray uh, the, there is like a primer like a uh, yeah. red oxy red oxy that's just it Find just find a white version of that. Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't bother. <clears throat> really? Not that common. You won't, you won't have the van long enough for it to matter. Mm. The same way I think it's overkill doing your floors. Because in three or four years, it won't matter because you'll sell the van. Because you will have done too many miles, you'll be on to the next one. <laughs> We need to sing when I'm cleaning windows. No, oh, we want to sing just another <laughs> manic Monday. <laughs> I can make some fine adjustments with a big hammer for you. <laughs> Any soft Any washing soft... chip? What do you want us to chat about? Tracy? Yeah, what do you want to know about soft washing, Tracy? Yeah, come on, Tracy, tell us. What do you want to know? Do you ever? Well, did I... you ever play the PlayStation Two? Um, it was like there was like a camera for the PlayStation 2 and it was when I'm cleaning windows it was like a window cleaning game that was so stupid who was it? she just messaged me going she's watching from the other room I think that's sadder right I toy I think sorry 
Rustoleum, she's saying, put on your van. Gosh, she's all over it, isn't she? Is she messaging you on Twitter? No, I'm just chat. Um, I pricing. Told... Did you mean pricing of the job or pricing of the kit? Where are you seeing pricing? Tracy has just written underneath. Oh, yeah, 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 pricing. Um, you know, go for it with soft washing. So, I think that the, the or pricing for soft washing, I, yeah, I think this is probably the wrong time to ask that question when we're talking to like a supplier rather than someone who's who offers soft yeah. washing as a service potentially I, I don't do much soft washing but i have been asked all the time about the pumps and the kit and the gear so i am making a post pump injection soft wash unit that um, will run off a 12 volt pump that will just inject whatever chemical you want and suck the water from your fitted water tank um, and fire it out of your brush or sprayer or whatever you want to do. The only thing I'd say about soft washing is it's just as hard work as pressure washing. I'm using chemicals anyway after pressure washing. Soft washing generally, you're going to be agitating it with a brush. Um, you're going to be rinsing it down afterwards anyway. Soft washing vertical surfaces, all you've got to try and consider is the square meterage it's the same as a flat surface but you've got to try and measure it vertically as well just put it into my calendar i've got an online calendar uh, calendar calculator smout.club type in your square meterage smout.club look at you <laughs> posh calculator. i'd say maybe three pound fifty for soft washing depending on what chemical you're using is about appropriate um, if you're going to do the, do the full service, you know, apply the chemicals, give it a good good scrub, get rid of any any surface debris, and rinse it down afterwards. I'd say about three pound fifties, around about right for my yeah, area. Here's a, good, here's a good question: If a high pressure hose reel is on a high pressure reel, say fifty meters, would you suggest unrolling the whole fifty meters before running a pressure washer, or if it's not a problem to have it coiled with high pressure? Super simple answer. Absolutely not a problem for it to remain on the reel. Just pull out what you want. It's that simple. When it comes to like electricals and using um, uh, extension leads, that's where you want to start pulling the reel out because you're going to develop. You're going to build up like a lot of heat inside the extension reel, and it could. You probably know more. A hell of a lot more about electrics than I do, but that's my understanding. No, you, you're right. Yeah. So, because the high pressure, so let's let's talk about what a high pressure hose is, right? So you've got your rubber internal sleeve, then you've got which the water passes through, then you've got a layer of metal, and if it's a twin wire, there'll be a layer of rubber, then another layer of metal, then the outer rubber that you see. I didn't know that. That's Good to know. That's why they call it twin wire. Mm -hmm. Single wire, twin wire, right? So if you try and bend the hose, right, you'll never fold it flat because of all the metal that's in it, which means the internal of the hose never gets crushed. So you can wind it on the reel, and it will never, um, it will never get crushed. So you can just use it on the reel, and that's it. And anybody telling you any different than that, Matt, really does not understand what they're talking about. With the uh, high pressure hoses. When's the course coming from PWS? What's the demand like? High by the sounds of it. I'd do it. I think you need it. Unless it's just a course in order to sell your products. I'm not I've interested. No interest. I'm not interested. I, I'm completely not interested in actually doing that. I, I'm, I'm totally not in... I could do open days and all kinds of shit, right? I will do an open day, but I tell you what, the focus won't be the machines. There'll be a bloody butty van there and a coffee van, and it'll be a social before anything else. So you're not going to offer 10% off your products at the end of the course? 
You're not going to give people a partial refund because they bought stuff from you at the end of the course. The problem is, is if you offer the course and then offer it with a discount code, you're implying sales. And, I, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really not about that. It's, it's like, I'm, I'm, hopefully for those that have met me, I'm really not like that. I, I'm not, I'm not really interested. We all have to make money. We all have to make a living, but I haven't got to sell every machine to every person. Yeah, it's not all about the money. It's not all about the money. I want to build long-lasting relationships. I was saying to you the other day, I want to build a long-lasting relationship with people. I'm not interested in seeing you once and doing something once. You know what I mean? It's That doesn't benefit any of us at all, doing something once. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually, I want to, I want people that will, that will, keep coming back because they trust and they believe in me and it doesn't matter if i'm 10 quid more expensive or 10 quid less expensive they keep coming back because they want to come back because people buy from people you know they're the sort of customers i want i don't want the price shopping single purchase box ship relationship mm -hmm. because i don't think that that's a good sustainable business model it means i've got to keep going out and fetching new customers in all of the time and i have to do that thing that we all hate which is what the one of the other companies we talked about tonight do they aggressively market yep for that and keep swapping over on brand new customers. same as my customers it's much easier to sell to a current customer than it is to go out and find new ones just be good yeah, be good to your time. current customers yeah i pay 20 quid says craig i reckon you're worth a bit more than that I reckon he wouldn't get a coffee for that. <laughs> <laughs> I have got a funny... I, have, I do call everybody to go, hey, it's time if I nip the loo. I'm like, put a quid in the pot. <laughs> I didn't put anything in the pot. I went to the toilet about six <laughs> times when I was there. There isn't a pot. It's just something we say. Because <laughs> people are looking for a pot to put a quid in. By the way, um, the size of your sandwiches that you order... That's not sustainable. You can't keep eating sandwiches that big. That's a one-off. That's a one-off. That's an every now and again. Okay. I haven't had a mock-up for about six months. Okay. I'll let you and off. And I ate off as well. You ate what? And I ate a chunk of yours too, because you were lame and couldn't manage it all. <laughs> that's, not a no that's not a normal person portion. Two eggs. Four sausages, three rashers, no, four rashers of bacon, some beans. A baguette. In a baguette. And you ate half of mine. What's wrong with you? No. I could get... you were crying. Everybody on YouTube, he left over some good prime meat in that, and he wouldn't give it his dog. My dog has a sensitive tummy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Next time she's up, I'm going to make sure that I feed her some proper food for you. She's had the shits for the last three days because of you. She hasn't had the shits because of me. <laughs> oh, crap. You wouldn't feed her anything. She liked you. Let's, uh, let me see if I can find the photo. I put a photo up earlier. I, I've been so busy today, I haven't had a chance to watch anything that's gone on. So I'll have to watch a video later, see how I've come out. Ooh. Oh, bless. That was when she decided she liked me enough. She was going to back onto me uh, with a chocolate starfish and rub it all over my chest just to make sure I smelt like her. She does the Great Dane lean when they, they rub their bum up against you and they lean on you. <laughs> she, she took to you after a while. And there's my, what do you call it, a member? Appendage. Appendage. Where's your appendage? S size of that. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Look at the size. <laughs> Tracy chocolate starfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tell him, Steve. Steve's straight in there on the chat. Steve, yeah, it's in the post, mate. You know what I mean? That's the kind of thing I need in the chat. Steve, you know I mean? who are you working for? You know what I mean? You tell him, Steve. You tell him. 
quality costs. Yeah, Jake's just like, as long as he doesn't cost me, I'm not bothered. Darren, the amount of people, the amount of people that have come to you because you popped up on my live stream. Come on. I think... I think I've tripled your Discord. <laughs> I think it's the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I remember when we did the first Q and A, and you went, "This is three times more than normally comes on." Wonder what that is. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. We had like ninety viewers earlier, and that's about thirty more than I normally get. Is it? Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't it? Steve's going to the dark side. Does every customer ask you for a discount? Right. So let's be let's be right. At this current moment in time, I've got more machines on my board than we can make and build. All right. Our compacts that are on the board, we're now into double figures. All right. So that's the big twelve grand machine that we can build, if the fabricator can get them built in time, we can build roughly one a week around our workload, right? Maybe two if we really pushed it and had a quiet week. And I, and I can't think if it's, it, it's 13 or 14 I've got on the board now, Jake. All right. The, the little machines, we're at that. So that's looking at a, the, the guy I spoke to on Saturday, I told him that he was looking at a minimum minimum of a 12 to 14 week wait for it in his van. And Sonia needs to pull her finger out. That's all I take from this conversation. She's the not PB working hard enough. The PBs, the machines that we, um, the PB machines that we do, um, there's a probably six week lead time on them now. Um, frames were turning out reasonably quickly. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at this. We own a two car washes in Glasgow, been Glasgow. Got six pumps at three phase, so we're constantly fixing burners as we have them for a pre wash. The hard work to keep the maintenance will give you a call in the morning. Definitely give me a call in the morning. Um, be interested to see what sort of boilers and what setup you've got on that. Um, what I would say is we have a WhatsApp for sending pictures to. Drop us a message. Do you? Uh, um, yeah, we have a company WhatsApp for sending pictures. Also, if you join the Discord, you get one-to-one -one advice from Darren, twenty-four-seven. Uh, you've done something to upset Sonia. She What's... just sent me a message saying, "My Jake can feck off." I'm <laughs> spitting in his <laughs> and laugh out loud. There's no reason there should be a waiting list. Come on, son. Do you call her son? Oh, yeah. Uh, usually the wife. <laughs> the worst bit, the worst bit is when the customers come in. And because remember before I was quite, and I've gone white really early because I'm not actually that old. You're a bit wild when I can see you. You look yeah, like Wolverine. Um, and Sonia, bless her cotton socks, as I remind her. She's a little bit on the chubby side, which means she's got no wrinkles. Wow, you uh, can't say that. Say that. I love her, but she knows what I mean. So she comes in, let me finish the story now. You make me sound bad. It's just that she's right. a bit on the chubby side. Right. So Sorry, she's got yeah. no wrinkles. Let me finish. Let me finish, right? So she's got no wrinkles. What was right? No wrinkles. So they come in and go, is your dad in today? <laughs> she rolls around everywhere. <laughs> right? Honestly... Honestly, at least three times a week. No. She you and my dad. She's four years older than me. <laughs> right? How bad's that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you got to have sponsored PWS on your van. Show them your new stickers, Jake. Have you got stickers, like big ones? Oh, yeah, I've got big ones, yeah. No, you ain't got big ones. You're just lying. You're just I talking now. Stickers. You've got little... No. Proper size ones that go. Oh, I've got ones this big that go on the size of boilers. Why didn't you give me one? Because it's as simple as this. Me and you have not got a commercial relationship. I help you out because it's a good thing. You help you do your stuff. I don't pay you. You don't pay me. 
we just do what's good for everybody. You think I'm getting the better end of the deal here, don't you? No, I think your viewers are getting the better end of the deal. With which, with which discount code? Where can they find the discount code? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which is bad this is, isn't it? <laughs> I've had like three whiskeys and two beers. Uh, uh, by the way, that one yeah. with your appendage, uh, that's the one. Do you like that picture? You should have that, you should have that as your YouTube picture. Hey. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Right. Are we nearly done, mate? Yeah, That's I think we've we've exhausted all the questions. Everyone's had enough. It's getting a bit silly on the chat now. A little bit. Craig, I can give you my big one. Yeah. Um, Darren, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening. You've been here for three hours and twenty-five minutes on a Monday night. I'll get the bill in the post. Standard hourly rate, Jake. Like I said, I think you're getting the better end of the deal. <laughs> oh, uh, we've done no marketing, no advertising. How am I getting the better end of the deal? We've slated other suppliers. <laughs> no, well, well, stop there. All right. I've already said Terry's a good place to buy from. <laughs> I've even big Ben up at Rutland Pumps. And we even talked about the air conditioning place. Craig's got a good point. He's got a very good point. <laughs> What's that? Um, we'll do this again, maybe next month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah. we said when we started this, we'd probably do this as a regular. Yeah. Um, so what I would say is, if the people in the chat want it to be regular, they need to tell you that they want it regular, don't they? They do. Um, I've got no plans, as we spoke about earlier. I did pop on live in one of the groups one night to do a Q and A questions, but I don't plan on doing that as a thing. Okay. I'm going to do a lot of Q and A anywhere. This is what it's going to be. Um, when am I going to get my boiler? When can I come back? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. You think? Does that work with you, or is your workload? No, that's. It's fine. Things are getting busy. There's lots of roof quotes, which is annoying because I'd prefer to do block block paved driveways and patios and stuff. But I mean, it's such hard work. It's hard work. Um, where can people find you? So you've got your we've got pws pwsce.co.uk for your website. Um, <clears throat> on Facebook, on Facebook, you've just launched your Ask an expert Facebook page. Yeah, that's a good place to find us. And you're on there as an expert as well. I am. Um, I'm trying to keep up with my Discord, let alone Facebook groups as well. But yeah. oh, but it's nice. That's a good one to be on. Yep, definitely. Um, uh, you you go live every so often from the shop as well. I. I do on our own on our own company Facebook. I go. I try and go live every week or two. I nearly went live today to talk about just leaving us alone for a couple of days so we can catch up a little <laughs> bit. Um. But yeah, yeah. The the um the Facebooks where we're at a lot of the time. You can also find us in your Discord. It's a good place. Like you say, I, I have been about to support your. Look at that. Look, Green Army at. See that. Yeah. See that. Look. Look. At that. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Look, look, look at that! Look, see that? That's more from Home Alone. <laughs> further down. This is why I have to do something about it. That guy, um, Chris, has got one of our compacts in his van. Is he the chap that does the roof cleaning on YouTube? No, he, oh. he doesn't like. He lo he looks similar. Mm. He, he he's actually at St George's Park. He's won the contract to clean St. George's Park. So he's doing loads at the moment. Mm. Um, right. Thank you so much for joining me. And I know you're a very busy man, so I appreciate your time. Yes. No worries, mate. As you can tell, I haven't put this on to be here. I was buttoning it up earlier because this is as I've come from work. Yeah. I'm going to go and have a shower and um, chill out. Oh, Mrs. Jake's had a good day at swimming. She's not very happy. Mrs. Jake. <laughs> She doesn't look very happy. She's 
Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. She's yeah, fine. Yeah. He's all right. I'm just searching um, healthy cheese toasties. Healthy cheese toasties. You need to get yourself an oat cake. No. There's no such thing as a healthy cheese toasty. Use it's my got local bread. spray and put it in the air fryer. Okay. It's got bread and it's got cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Two core components are not good. Right, thank you very much for having me, Jake. It's been good fun as always, mate. It's great as ever. Um, Catch you in a week or two. Yep. Have a good night, mate. Next time, because you're not going to miss it, Jake, try and get up early in the morning so we can have a day filming. I'll have the bill bench empty so you can put a time lapse up on the top. Amazing. Thank you. I look forward to it. See you later. See you, Darren. Thank you. That was nice, wasn't it, guys? That was lovely. What a beautiful live stream um thank you so much thank you so much to everyone that's joined and contributed and asked questions and all sorts i'm a little bit drunk to be honest um that bottle of whiskey's finished me off so i'm just gonna play a little advert thank you all so much for your contributions i, I don't undervalue any of you guys that i click live and there's like 30 people commenting saying hello you know I'm very humbled by it all. It's very, very cool that I get to do this. So thank you so much. And um, I'll see you next week. See you in a bit. Now, these videos take a lot of time and effort to film and edit on top of trying to run a successful pressure washing business. If you find any of the information in my videos useful, then I'd like for you to consider becoming a paid member of the channel. Circle members and above will get access to my private discord for members only where you can pretty much get a hold of me 24 hours a day for inspiration, technical help, marketing advice, or just a general chat. I post pictures and videos that you won't see on any of my other socials. You'll be the first to hear about giveaways, special offers, and announcements. And it's just generally a nice place full of like-minded people who are all heading towards similar goals. We've got various different experience levels. We've got a few professionals in the chat as well. If you want to push your business, in my opinion, this is the place to be. We also have two other membership tiers. One is just to show a bit of support for the channel and the other one is for boosted members which will not only give you access to the private discord but also loads of high quality promotional images for you to start your business. I know what it's like when you're ready to get going but you don't have any before and after pictures to put on your leaflets. At the moment there's about 150 images that you can use for pretty much whatever you like and my intention is to constantly update these over the next few years with all of my before and afters that have helped promote my business. Last thing before I let you go New videos come out every Monday night at half five and then I go live at half seven to chat to you guys and answer as many questions as possible. We do live quotes for real customers and just generally keep up to date with everything going on in the pressure washing world. Thanks for watching. Back to the video.